Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, today our topic again we continue uh, exposing those who Muslims think that they are scholars. Uh, in the previous debate today we got uh, Abdul uh, busted. He claimed uh, to be a scholar from Nigeria. And actually the funny that the Muslim they start posting already that this is not a scholar it is someone I paid him to call me and this is a sign of defeat very clear you know the guy is very well known between the Muslims yet the Muslims they claim that I paid him he's a fake paid um, a, a person who I paid him in order to make Islam look uh, funny and stupid if we go in the in the comments which made by the Muslims today you will see the following um, let us see where the guy he say that the same they did actually when I debated uh, a guy, uh, the head of the Islamic uh, uh, Center in USA at Husseini. The Muslims they said I paid this guy. Let us see. Let us search fast for it in the text. Oops. Let us search. I'm not sure what happened. Okay. Oh. Each time I click to search, it takes me somewhere else. Uh, maybe. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to search for the text, but it takes me. It doesn't allow me to do that. But anyway, you will see it in the text there. I saw it. Where the Abdul he claimed that this is a fake sheikh, I paid him. I will try one more time to search for it. No, you see, when I click uh, Control uh, Command uh, uh, F to search, it's taking me out of the screen. I'm not sure why. Hmm. Anyway, uh, when the Muslims they say that he, you know this sheikh is paid by you, that's mean you agree that this guy is totally shish kebab. And I understand. But what about Didat? Didat, the one you Muslims you praise and you think he was an amazing person who nobody can debate him. Didat, Didat always he debate people who do not know anything about Islam, which mean is going to be a one way debate. And mostly he chose carefully he debate who until one day he debated Anis Sharush who was an Arab Christian and Anis Sharush made him really look so bad and so sad and did that he refused to debate him for the second time because they agreed to make two debates one about uh, Islam and one about Christianity uh, but did that he would draw from the second debate i don't know where i can find uh, I'm, I'm sure you can find it guys i don't know it is here some here we go uh no fake prophet fake uh what is the guy i uh, i don't think i did delete his comment i did not because usually i allow muslims to express their anger Um, I don't know maybe it's in, in the not approved comments but anyway you will check it out and you will see maybe it's not approved comment yet I'm not sure let me see hold on which mean I can see it you cannot see it um, And uh, no, weird. Mm -hmm. 
maybe he deleted I don't know <laughs> maybe he deleted I don't know because I saw what he said is uh, this guy is paid uh, literally he said this guy is paid by me which I find very funny anyway we will go and talk about D that soon and you will see how the Muslims people like those how they help us always to expose the cult of Islam um, Okay. Yeah, maybe he de maybe he deleted because actually beside the video you see in the same page we have our video in the side of it you will see an image of the sheikh which was calling me today Ustaz Ajamu whatever his name you know as you see it here this is him the same guy who was speaking to us yet they say this is guy he was a fake caller anyway this guy today he was saying that the Nasara are not the Christians according to Quran but the Quran never mentioned anything except uh, the Nasara and still anyway the nasara in the quran is the ones who worship uh, jesus as god and as a son of god and they worship him as divine and they believe that he is uh, one of the trinity in the top of that uh, they believe he was a crucified now if we go and see what did that said i want to show you what did that said let us go back to did that and see Where is Didat? All right. There is a video of Didat explain what is the Bible. Oh, hold on. He explained what is the Bible. The bulk of our people, Muslims, even learned Muslims, they really do not know what the Bible is. I have been lecturing in the Middle East, in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Bahrain. And at times, those of our brethren there in the Middle East, they would like to have my lectures translated. So, and I hear the translator translating the subject that I have been speaking on, for example, what the Bible says about Muhammad. So the translator says what the Torah, you know, I can understand. I can't speak Arabic, but when the man is translating, I can understand. He's saying what the Torah. Did he say I don't speak Arabic? Did I hear the dad saying I don't speak Arabic? So how in the world this guy was teaching you your religion? when he cannot even understand his own book because remember reading the Quran in any translation is just a translation it's not approved even by Muslims to be a Quran so we just heard this guy saying I don't understand Arabic so what he understand when he say Injil he know that he said Injil but I did not say the word Injil he said Torah I did not say the word Torah so he don't understand Arabic <laughs> You know, I can understand. I can't speak Arabic, but when the man is translating, I can understand. He's saying what the Torah says about Muhammad. So I interrupt the man. I say, I didn't say Torah. So he corrects himself. He says, what the Injil in Arabic is saying. What the Injil says about Muhammad. I said, I didn't say Injil. I said, what the Bible. Bible means a book. It comes from the Greek word Biblos. Biblos means a book. From which they get the word Bible. Holy Bible means holy book. Translate that. Holy book. Instead of saying Torah, Zabur, Injil. So what is happening is that the Muslim gets caught out before he starts by admitting that this is Torah or Zabur or Injil. The Bible is not the Torah, it's not the Zabur, it's not the Injil. Now what we believe in is, we believe in four heavenly books. And we name them 
We say we believe in the Torah, we believe in the Zabur, we believe in the Injil, and we believe in the Furqan. Furqan is the Holy Quran. Okay, he just said, said the Furqan is the Holy Quran. Is that true? Let me teach this Abdul that he is an idiot and he do not know what the Furqan is. This is a chapter 2, verse number 54. It says, وَإِذْ أَتَيْنَ مُوسَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْفُرْقَانِ So how you say the Furqan is the Quran and the Furqan is given to Musa? He is being confused because the word Furqan is mentioned more than one time in his Quran. This is a chapter 2, verse number 2, sorry, verse number 53. All right? And here they are translating the word uh, uh, assertion or certerian. The fact it is, this is the Furqan. So Furqan is given to Musa too. So how you are, how you can confirm that this is given to Muhammad and this is the Quran? Either it's the Quran or it's the Furqan. The reason he says that because the Quran is a stupid book and it make the Muslims confused. Let us continue. Tell us more, did that so we can laugh. What else? Now, what is Torah? Torah is the revelation, the Wahi, that Allah Barita gave to Hazrat Musa salam. That is the Torah. We believe that Hazrat Musa salam was a man appointed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, God Almighty, and whatever instructions were given through him is the Torah. Whatever. Was it given in a book form? No, Allah gave by word form. Wahi. Did you hear it? Did Musa receive the Torah in a book form? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> man, man, oh man. I mean, this is really something. This is I'm trying to fix the size of this thing so you guys you see it better. Hold on, give me a second. He just said the Torah was not given in a book form. I'm not the one who said that. I'm not sure why it's not even allowed in me to do that. Let us see here. Okay, double size. That would be better. Let us hope so. All right. He said, listen carefully for what he said. Whatever. Was it given in a book form? No, Allah gave by word form. Allah gave him by word form. But every statement in the Quran confirmed that Musa he received a book and he was not receiving words form. You are a fake scholar and let us get you busted. The first thing Musa received, it's called the, ta the tablet, which is al alwah Chapter 7, verse number 145. Was the tablet was written or it was inspiration? It was written. And we wrote for him upon the tablet, the lessons, supposedly Allah, he wrote for him everything. Which means the tablet is not only Ten Commandments in Islam, the tablet is everything the Jews they learned. Then in different verses in the Quran, if the Muslim they will say the tablet is not the Torah, then what is the what is the what is the what is the Torah then? Isn't it the tablet is the Torah or and part of the Torah? If the Torah is not part of the tablet, then the Muslim they, they have to give us the name. What is the name of that book which is called the tablet? Now if we continue, we will find in different place where the Quran says the following. Chapter 87, verse number 19. Suhufi, Ibrahim wa Musa. What Suhaf mean? This is the Muslim translation, not my translation. The books of Abraham's and Musa's. He said, we gave Musa's Wahi, we did not give Musa's a written statement. But where in the Quran it says that Musa's he did not receive a written statement and he received an inspiration as he claimed. 
That is a very stupid mistake from the that who claimed to be a sheikh and he claimed to be a shaky one. How in the world you say to us that Musa received inspiration when the Quran confirmed that he received books? And not only that, even your stupid book call us people of the books. So how Musa did not receive inspiration, then you call the Jews people of the book if they don't have a book. That means the Quran, he chose the wrong word because then we should call the Jews the people of their inspiration. The whole Quran keep calling the Christians and the Jews people of the book. Nothing else, nothing more. Let's read together. So you are saying to us that Musa did not receive a book, but yet your book calling him or call the people who follow him people of the book. That's a very stupid, you know, stupid statement. Chapter 2, verse 105, chapter 2, 109, chapter 364, chapter 365. 369, 370, 371, 372, 375, 398, 399, 3, 3, uh, 110, 3, uh, 111, 319. I mean, it's endless. So we don't have a book, we have an inspiration, but we are called the people of the book. So who is the stupid here? Who is the stupid here? Musa's receive inspiration according to Quran. Where is that? So why Allah he wrote the Torah for him by his hand? When a Muslim he speak about his religion, literally. He, he don't really teach, he just do poo-poo. In chapter 2, verse number 87, what it says, الكتابة, What does that mean? Read carefully. And here they say the scriptures, but it's not really scriptures, it says kitab, which means a book. Let us change the translator and see how the translation will change. Usually they copy from each other, but anyway, in Arabic, the word kitab means book. And we gave Musa's the book. But this guy, he said, Musa did not receive a book. Musa received inspiration. You see, your God, if your God only gave Musa's inspiration, then the book which is in the hand of Musa's is not from Allah. Who is talking there? Let us listen again to what the dad said so we can laugh again at the wisdom of this old man who is teaching the Muslims what Islam is about. God Almighty and whatever instructions were given through him is the Torah whatever was it given in a book form no Allah gave by word form whatever instruction did he say whatever instruction did we hear him saying whatever instruction we give him whatever whatever which mean anything all of it was always in a word form, not in a book form. Whatever instructions were given through him is the Torah. Whatever. Was it given in a book form? No, Allah gave by... See how stupid he is? But isn't it here it says that the instructions was given to Moses is given in a book form? And this is chapter 2, verse number 87. What about here? Chapter 87, verse number 19. What about here? Chapter 7, verse 145. In chapter actually 7, verse 145, it says it clearly that all the details is written by the hand of Allah to Moses. And we wrote for him upon the tablet the lessons 
to be drawn from all things and explanation of things how clear we can make it that the dad is a shish kebab fool who he claimed that he is a scholar and he want to teach you Islam this is a scholar who was debating the Christians and this is a lesson to the Christians that when you debate Muslims and they debate you about the Bible which means you allow them only to throw rocks at you but you know nothing about your their religion they can play all the games they want when you are ignorant anybody can make fun of you anyone so all the places all the verses in the Quran confirm that Musa received books So why did that is trying to say he did not same time when he say we give the we give uh, uh, we give Moses words as an inspiration can he explain to me why Moses did not receive inspiration from the angel Jibreel why does Jibreel he appear in the story of Moses not but in the story of Muhammad, yes. Do we have any Muslim in the text? Muslims. They have no knowledge of their book and yet they want to school you about your book but it's not their fault if they play that they are people who knows if you do not know anyway when you do not know anyone can just uh, recite some verses for you and play games and you 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 believe whatever he's saying because simply you are ignorant if there is any muslim would like to give me a call tell me and i will open my skype do we have any Muslim? Any Muslim, he have the courage to call me. If we go to the books of interpretations, we will see that all the interpretation of Islam says clearly that Musa has received book and the Quran confirmed that he received a book and the Quran call us people of the book does not call us people of inspiration. So who is the stupid here? And by the way, when the Quran said here that Allah he wrote for Moses in the tablet all the details, that's mean the tablet cannot be one tablet. It have to be thousands, if not millions. Because imagine here, he did not only write for him the law, he wrote for him the explanation of the law. I wonder how many trucks Moses have to carry, the poor Moses, to carry all those tablets. How in the world he wrote for him all the explanation? What does that mean? Everything in details, which means all the pages of the Torah is written in tablets. Does it say their explanation? So not only the law, the law, the lesson, and the, and the and the explanation. Do we have any Muslim here want to say something? stupidity versus uh, open mouth you can open your mouth as much as you want but don't do poopoo -poo. anyone the guy today the one we debated from Nigeria 
he ended his career in front of the Nigerian people he claimed that the word Nasara is not about the Christians according to the Quran but the Quran never called anyone except Nasara same time he is trying to say okay the Quran confirmed the book which was with the Nasara but you are not Nasara it doesn't matter the Nasara still there are people who believe in Jesus as God and as divine and as a trinity and they believe in the crucifixion of Jesus and they believe that Jesus is divine so what is the answer and then we said to him where is the word Nasara coming from he went to the Bible which he's saying this is not the book of the Christians <laughs> to prove to me where who Jesus <laughs> we asked him where is Nasara coming from he says let me show you from the Bible you just told me that the Nasara are not the true Christians. Sorry, you, 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 you said to me that uh, Nasara, Nasara does not mean the Christians. This is not the Christians. Okay, so why you are going to the book of the Christians, who they are, the book of the Bible, to show me? Why you don't show me from the Quran? Because simply the Quran is a stupid book. And then when we got him busted about where Nasara is coming from, because the Quran says that Isa said to his apostles, who is going to be my Nasara? Who is going to be my answer which mean my helpers so he have to no choice except to seek knowledge from the true book which is the book of god which is the bible trying to find where the word nasara is coming from but the quran have different opinion so he got himself busted because he never heard that the quran saying what is nasara and where it's coming from do we have any abdul wanna call me so what those people you know did that and that what is what is your scar as Muslims Zakir Naik this guy from Nigeria did that I mean a bunch of idiot making fun of you I can build the career of myself debating those who know nothing and that will make me look always victorious you know in the Middle East a woman she don't uh, she don't look good she don't walk with the women she is more pretty than her so what she do she look for someone she is a lot less more good looking than her so when they walk together people they see her beautiful and they see the other one ugly and this is what the Muslims do the Muslim they look for someone he do not know really much of the topic his topic and our topic so when we have a fight with him he will look like he do not know what he's talking about and this is mean that I am I am a hero as simple as that do we have any Muslim would like to call us Allah he inspired Moses according to Islam by the way if Allah gave Moses the tablet and he wrote for it wrote in it everything where is the tablet of Allah Muhammad he copied the story from the Jews he put it in the Quran but he cannot explain to us what happened the Quran confirmed that Moses get angry and he broke the tablet. He broke all the tablets. He did not leave even one. Do we have any Muslim? Then when the anger of Moses abated, he took up the tablets and in their inscriptions, there was guidance and mercy for those who fear their Lord. What Moses did? If Allah did not give Moses written words, he gave him only inspiration. What those tablets about? What is the book? 
Stupid cult. They have no answer. They are copy paste. <clears throat> Speaker corner. My corner is bigger than your corner, my friend. I just finished a video and I have almost 8,000 people watching it. What speaker corner? Your speaker corner is potato. They don't even dare to call me. Give me their Skype. I will call them in their speaker corner. What do you say? Let us see who's hiding. I will call them. They can go stand in a speaker corner and call me by their phone in Skype. Can they do that? Do you want me to fly all the way to England to be in the speaker corner? It's called the speaker corner, not showing your bum corner. So you want why you want me to show there? I mean, do you want you want my speak? Here we go. I will give you my speech. Can you ask your friends who they are in the speaker corners to be brave enough to call me? Right? Yeah, you cannot. That's very dangerous. Here we show reference, and nobody there. Shamshi, Shamshi is an idiot. Shamshi is an idiot. He exposes a prophet. That's why he don't dare. I went to his uh, channel, and I posted for him. I'm waiting for you. I was posting almost for fifteen days every day. Muhammad Hijab and Shamshi, Shamshi, and neither of them dare to call me. Who is the one scared? Give me the Skype of Shamshi and I will call Shamshi. What do you say? Let us see who is scared. I will call him. Can Shamshi take my call? We will win anyway, as long as he is a hero and we are hiding from him. <laughs> Trust me, Muslims, if they see that somebody, they can beat him up, they will be so happy to have a fight with him. But they hide because simply they knew that they are no match. Otherwise, why they are hesitating? What, what is the hesitation from? Here we go. We are waiting for she. We are waiting for Shemshi and we are waiting for Mimi. And neither Mimi call me and neither Shemshi call me. And hold on. Do you know what Shemshi he said in, in one of his video? I don't wanna I don't want you to be sad, my friend, but if I show you what he said in the video, you will die laughing. Hold on. Let me show you what Shemshi he said. Shemshi, where are you, Shemshi? <coughs> Shemshi. Okay, hold on. This is a video made by Shemshi. I'm not going to play it all, but a little bit of it so people can laugh. There is hadith that the Messenger of Allah said, Unzil Quran ala sabati ahruf, that the Quran was revealed upon sabati ahruf, mean different ways or different dialects. Uh, because what we have to understand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna anzalna wa Qur'an arabiyyan la'allakum ta'qilun. So we have, we, we've, we have sent down the Qur'an, the Arabic language. Perhaps you understand that. So, <laughs> so the that who do not speak Arabic as we heard him, saying, I do not know Arabic. So who is the stupid here? We send the Qur'an to you in Arabic language so you might understand. And yet we find that the Arab themselves they cannot understand the Quran unless we have it in seven Quran. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. So the Arab themselves they cannot understand the Quran unless it is sitting in seven ways. Why? Because the Quran is not easy to understand, and they are Arab. So how did that who want to understand the Quran who don't understand who don't speak any of those ways? Uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas and many 
Sallallahu mentioned 19 Sahaba narrated this hadith that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said Unzi al-Qur'an ala sab'ati ahruf that the Qur'an was revealed upon sab'ati ahruf mean different ways Different ways, where is the different ways? <laughs> what is the seven Qur'ans? All what happened that Muhammad he says something in the morning he said the opposite after after that and actually he himself is Shamshi he is going for, to quote for us a story about what happened that two Muslims they were reciting the Quran in two different way. He was in the masjid, and uh, another Sahabi was reciting Surah Al Furqan, and he said the way he was reciting it different ways. The way I learned it from the Messenger of Allah, the way the Prophet taught me uh, the, the the Surah, and here shows you how the Sahaba were very eager to not let anyone play with the Quran. Not anyone. No he one. said I was about to grab him. Even he was praying. He said I was about to grab him and pull him and take him to the Messenger of Allah Right away. Because I was very surprised. Then he said I, I, I was waiting for him patiently. When he finished, I said to him, why are you reciting this? Why you are you reciting? Where you get this Quran, you idiot? The Prophet never said that. The Prophet, he recited the same chapter, but this, this is not the way he'd give it to us. Different words. <laughs> I was going to grab him eagerly. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him busted. I'm going to spank him because obviously this is totally different Quran. But uh, Surat Luqman or Surat Al Furqan, the way you are reciting it, he said the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught me uh, uh, this way. He said no, Prophet Sallam taught me a different way. Look at this. Why people who live in the same street they are learning the Quran in two ways. They are from the same tribe. They have the same dialect. They have the same language. <laughs> to make it simple, there is two guys who live. They are they are from Scotland, Scotch, and they are living in the same street, and they are from the same village, and they are from the same town, and they are from the same tribe, which means from the same family. Yet Muhammad he gave them the Quran, each one of them in a different way. <laughs> Because Muhammad, he cannot recite the same verse twice in the same way. So he come with the lie saying, oh, I, Allah, he gave it to me in different ways. Seven ways, seven ways, okay, seven ways. Yeah. So he said, come. So he said, I dragged him Drag to the him. message of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the Sahaba, the ghira, the mm. jealousy they had for the Quran. Mm. From day one, you cannot play with the Quran. You cannot. So, so he talked to the message of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa The message of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yeah, Umar, or Turku, or leave him. He said, recite, read out the surah to me, Omar. He read it out. He said, the other Sahabi. He said, read it out. He read it out. He said, that's how it was revealed to me. I, then he mentioned the hadith, Unzi al Quran ala sab'ati ahraf. The Quran was revealed of, uh, in a different ways. Naam? Because, and it's from the mu'jiza. Again, as the Ulam mentioned, the, the, the fact that the Prophet knew how to recite the Quran different ways, like the uh, Hudayl, another tribe. The tribe of Samim. There's many tribes. Okay, okay, just get, just get lost, guys. It's a, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. Uh, hold on, this is not about your prophet. He can recite it in different ways. You idiot. You are making your prophet is the one who can recite it in different ways, or this is your God? He gave it to him in different ways. Are you saying your prophet he fabricated the Quran and he make it different ways? So he was uh, remaking Quran. Look what Muhammad he said about this. Muhammad he requested seven Quran because his people cannot handle it. Read it me carefully. Allah has commanded you to recite to your people. Jibreel said to Muhammad, Allah has commanded you to recite the Quran to your people in one dialect. Upon this, he said, Upon this, who? Muhammad, he said. I ask Allah burden and forgiveness my people are not capable of doing it so it's not him who recite the Quran in seven different ways supposedly it is asking is asking Allah and Allah gave him additional Quran and then Jibreel he came and he gave him another pizza the second Quran came and he said okay Allah command you to recite the Quran in two ways and then he said, oh, I seek burden from Allah. My people cannot do it into the, we want more. 
so he keep asking him for more and more and more until it became seven dialect now here we will notice the following Muhammad he stopped with seven who said that there is only seven dialect between the Arab this guy himself he is from Morocco he is not an Arab he's an African he have nothing to do with the Arab if he speak to me Arabic I will not understand a word of what he say if he speak his own dialect I will not understand two words together yet he claimed to be an Arab so what seven dialect you mean people of Tunisia they have their own dialect and this is now people in Egypt people in um, Jordan people in Syria people in Iraq uh, people in Yemen people were seven dialect if people who live in Arabia and Peninsula who they are all of them almost speaking the same language they cannot handle the Quran in one dialect how an Indian he can handle the Quran in a language is not even his own we heard this Abdul saying that we gave you the Quran in Arabic so you might understand that's mean the Quran was sent only to the Arab because in order to teach the Word of God you have to speak to people in their language according to the Quran the Quran confirms saying we never send a messenger except he speak the language and the tongue of his own people which mean you have to be from the people speaking the tongue of those people chapter 14 verse number 4 and we never sent a messenger save with the language with the language of his folk we never so how Muhammad can be a messenger for mankind that is a contradiction based on the Quran to be a messenger for Allah to India you have to be an Indian speaking the language of your folk to be a messenger for the Japanese you have to be a Japanese speaking the language of your folk why so you might understand and the Quran saying that clearly so they might understand what we gave them okay and this is the way of Allah to send his messages in order to make it clear for them so the seven letters proven to us Muhammad is to be a scam Muhammad he cannot remember what he said in the morning he said the verse in the front of this guy different way from what he said to the other guy so now we have two guys are fighting this is not the way it is I heard the prophet he did not say it this way okay let's go both of us to the prophet the prophet said to the first one recited the second one okay recited he said okay both of you are right because Allah he gave it to me in seven letters but look here what happened how come Muhammad never mentioned that before that Allah he gave him the Quran give him the Quran in seven letters to the point those Muslims are fighting because if the Muslims been informed that Allah gave Muhammad the Quran in seven letters they will not be fighting correct the other guy who said to himself okay well the Prophet he told us already that he received the Quran in seven letters are we guys getting the point they are fighting they are fighting because none of them heard the Prophet saying that Allah gave him the Quran in two ways or three ways or four ways this is why he was saying I wanted to grab him I wanted to get him busted I, because he never heard Muhammad saying such a thing before so the question here why Muhammad never said from the first day Allah gave me the Quran in seven ways Muhammad he did not mention the seven letters until he got busted with those two guys when those two guys each one of them he, rem he, he recite the verses differently and they start fighting about oh, this is not the way the guy he said I say I, this is what I heard from the Prophet the other guy he said well I, I heard differently from the Prophet suddenly Muhammad decide to say to them the truth that Allah he gave me the Quran in seven letters and this is why Muhammad is a scam any Muslim have an objection And Muhammad actually not only stop here Muhammad he said in the Quran confirming that Allah make him forget the Quran
And what Muhammad said is beyond stupidity. In chapter 2, verse 106, he said, Nothing of our revelation we do abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we will make something better or similar. I mean, who is stupid here? Allah make revelation, but then Allah He will make me forget His revelation because Allah will write better revelation. We well, thank you very much. <laughs> Allah will make Quran better than the Quran of Allah. Muslims, does the verse says, none of our revelation do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten? You tell me why Allah causing you to forget. He's talking about you, causing you or causing Muhammad. This is causing Muhammad. So Muhammad here to cover his ass again. He cannot recite verses he mentioned before. So he have to come with a solution. Saying to the Muslim, don't worry, be happy. Yes, I forgot the verses, but Allah will give me something better or similar. And here you notice the word similar, how stupid it is. Because if Allah will give you something similar, what's the point of making you forgetting the verses? Are you with me, guys? So imagine I say to you, Shish kebab, shish kebab, shish kebab. Hey, and then I make you forget it, and I give you something similar. Shish kebab, shish kebab, shish kebab. Hey, hey brother, but this is similar for the other one. Oh no, uh, the other one it was shish kebab, shish kebab, shish kebab. Hey, this one shish kebab, shish kebab, shish kebab. Hey, oh, oh okay, you get the point. What's similar? It is similar, not exactly the same. So it's not going to be shish kebab, shish kebab, shish kebab. Hey, it's going to be like this. Shish kebab, hummus, shish kebab. Hey, it's similar. <laughs> this is this is God. Are you serious that this is God? You, your God, He will make you forget the Quran to give you a similar Quran. Who is the stupid here? So why in the world, like imagine I build a, a house, have a three bedrooms and one living room and one kitchen and two bathroom. And then you destroy my house and you say to me, hold on, I will give you something similar. So I say like, what? Why? So why you destroy it if it's going to be similar? Either you make it better or bigger or there's no point of having similar. But because Muhammad is a liar, he cannot recite the same verse twice. And when he said we cause to be forgotten, Muhammad here, he said something very weird because the one who caused believers to forget the Quran is the shaitan. Who is the one who caused you to forget the Quran? Shaitan. Let's see. Chapter, chap, there's many chapters actually, you know, speaking about this story. But chapter 6, verse number 68 is the easiest one to, to understand. And when those sit with those, see those who uh, make fun of a revelation, would withdraw from them until they change the topic. And if the devil caused thee to forget, to forget what? What the Quran told you. So who is the one who caused you to forget the Quran? Shaitan. Do we have an Abdul? Who is Abdul wanna call me so I will open Skype for him? Anyone? So Allah, to make it simple, Allah will make you forget the Quran, so he will make a better Quran. I mean, I'm really, really convinced. I mean, this is, must be true. And Allah will make either better or similar. How Allah can make better Quran than the Quran? Allah will go in competition with himself? How the Quran of Allah can be better than the Quran of Allah? 
all what we have here Muhammad trying to cover his ass he cannot repeat the same chapter or same verses twice correctly so he said to them okay well you know anything we abrogate here we go so we abrogate the Muslim they say to you there's verses even abrogated by recitation but not by practice why in the world they are abrogated by recitation but not by practice what the point as long we still need to practice those verses how you abrogate the verses recitation what is the what is the wisdom of that what is the wisdom if the Quran says that they say uh, uh, do stoning to death and we are going to practice stoning to death so what is the wisdom of deleting the recitation of the verses from the Quran huh I will tell you what the wisdom the wisdom is the Muslims don't have the verses no more the goat ate it And now they claim that this verse is abrogated by recitation. The fact is not. The God ate. Hey, my friend from Tunis. We have people here from Tunisia. How are you, my friend? Good to have you. See, I told you many, many people from North Africa are leaving Islam. Here we go. The, the brother here who made a donation, he is from Tunisia. Wonderful. The verse of stoning and breastfeeding an adult ten times was revealed and the paper was with me under my pillow when the messenger of Allah died we were preoccupied with his death and a time sheep came and ate it man and now the Muslim they say oh we don't have the verse of the stoning to death but we practice it so what prevented you from reciting the verse of stoning to death as long it was a verse and the funny they say to us the Quran is preserved brother your God even could not step a goat from eating the Quran the same as your God could not stop the cockroaches from eating the Kaaba yesterday and today millions of cockroaches attack the Kaaba under the supervision of Allah and Allah is watching live camera from Saudi Arabia and yet the Muslim they say to us that Allah he protect the Kaaba by sending birds to fight the enemy uh, which have elephant which one is better elephant enemy or army or or cockroaches hmm? yeah, I'm not going to ask why Allah defend the Kaaba against a Christian army when the Muslims they believe that the God of the Christian is the same as the God of the Muslims but they are just lost so how come the Kaaba was under the pagan having 360 idols and Allah defend those who worship the idols against those who worship the true God doesn't make sense does it because according to Muslims this has happened when the Arab pagan they have a 360 idols around the Kaaba so why Allah defending the Kaaba like this anyone do we have any Muslim wanna call me so I will open my Skype? I did not open my Skype because I don't wanna open it unless somebody wanna call. Only Muslims. Anyone? Any Muslim? <clears throat> so as you see, the Muslims are very confused. Any question we ask him, it doesn't matter what the question is. The Muslims have no answer for it. No, I don't agree. Islam is corrupt. You cannot corrupt the corruption. I mean, cor Islam is corrupt. That's mean Islam was in a in somehow one day it used to be original. There's nothing is called Islam. Islam is a joke. Islam is a collection of paganism, Christianity, Judaism, Sabian, Hindus, Buddhas, you name it. Uh, it's like uh, uh, Islam is like this. <clears throat> Somebody he made a trap for a bunch of insects. And then he put them all in one container and he smashed them all together and he said to you this is protein this is the protein of Allah will enjoy eating the protein we cannot find in the Quran anything about Christianity can lead us into any 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 uh, as you see the guy was debating me today he was saying to me the Quran is not talking about the, the true Christians so what is the true Christians
Anyone? <clears throat> Let me open Skype. Maybe <coughs> we can get Abdul to call us. You never know. We might meet Abdul. He knows what he's talking about. Until now, I never met Abdul. He have any idea what Islam is about? Never. <coughs> Until now, they don't even know if Allah is a spirit or not. <coughs> All right. My Skype is open if you are a Muslim. Only if you are a Muslim, please. Don't call me unless you are a Muslim. Because no matter how many times we say, don't call me unless you are a Muslim, still people call. Any Muslim? And a smart Muslim. Let us see what this guy he want. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yes, my friend. Are you a Muslim? Yes. Assalamu alaikum, brother. How are Wa alaikum you? Salam. What do you want to say, Mr. Shafiq? Um, nothing <laughs> uh, specific, really. It was my friend who is uh, requested that I uh, speak with you tonight. All right. Now, um, so no problem. Let us let us let us let us open the conversation this way. Let us let us let us open the conversation this way to make it easier for you. Sure. As long as you said you are a Muslim, why? What make you Muslim? What does that mean? I mean, why you believe Islam is a true religion? Um, it makes the it makes the most sense. What makes sense Towards, about it? That if you go well, to heaven, Allah will give you a lot of women for sex. Does that make sense? No, but that's just the uh, male, like uh, uh, a pleasure of of the male. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but uh, so, but but uh, the pleasure of the male. What about the pleasure of the female? Now, uh, brother, I am not a very well versed Muslim, mm -hmm. but uh, let's let's go back to your original statement of uh, why it makes the most sense. Okay, so mm -hmm. in my opinion, okay, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Islam makes the most sense because in Christianity it is. You know, you need Jesus to be saved because Jesus died for your sins, correct? Mm -hmm. So, what about um, Adam when he went against God's word? Did God not give Adam the ability to ask for forgiveness? So, that by itself means that humans were granted forgiveness from the very beginning. Is that not correct? No problem, I'm listening. So why is it that Christianity mm -hmm. says that you need Jesus for forgiveness when God has allowed okay. Adam? Let me ask you first. Your sure. God, yeah. Allah, he forgave Adam when he was okay. in heaven. Let, yes let or me no? stop you there. It's not it's not my God. Allah is God. No, no, it's, it's not you know, you know this is your God. Come on, you know, don't tell me. How is it my don't, how is it your my God? God? I will prove it to you. I would prove it. My God don't have a version in the heaven. Your God have versions. We can't we can't have the same God, but we have to different we, heaven. We worship okay. No, so no, no, let us go. Let, let us have to change the topic. We can go, we, we can go, we can go later to see who is your God, who is my God. No problem. No, no, but let I'm us not, talk about let us talk about Adam, my friend. Your God Allah, He for He He forgive Adam. When he commits okay, sin, you keep saying, "My God, uh, my God, Allah." Are you going so, to stuck with this word? Are, are you going to allow me to have a conversation with you? I allow you to say whatever you want. Let me say yeah, whatever I want. Yeah, you know, but I want. Are you going to force off. me? Are you going to force me to say that your God is my God? Is that what you want? 
be okay one god no no right? there's no we one god there's one no god. one god there's no one god there's no one god there's many god there's sh shaitan is god money is god six is god penis is god everybody worship something now you Maybe worship you. and you worship one his name is allah let us see who is he let me ask you you said that allah that adam he's, he was allowed to ask allah for forgiveness did allah did allah forgive adam Did Allah forgive uh, forgive Adam for going against His word? Yes. Okay. Why then he kicked him out from heaven? Because he went against their word. But you just you just said he forgive him. That is correct. Yes. And you are the one who said that Islam makes sense. If I forgive you, I kick you out of my house. If you know somebody has mm. done wrong, mm. right? Mm. Forgiveness is not letting them come back, but forgiveness is acknowledging that they have done wrong. Really? And 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 letting you just said to me, yeah. my friend, hold on, hold on. You are the one who said to me, in order to be saved, you have to believe in Jesus so you For can be Christians. saved. Yeah. So you, are you saying to me, so so why you are asking Allah for forgiveness? Uh, is, is that will give you, bring you to heaven or will it will keep you out of heaven if you ask Allah for forgiveness? Do you hear me? Hello. Yeah. You ask Allah for Sorry, you, you, you ask Allah for forgiveness. No problem. You ask Allah for forgiveness. Is that to go back to heaven or no? First of all, we haven't reached heaven, so how can I go? There's another question. Heaven? There's another question. Why you ask Allah for forgiveness? Is that because if if Allah forgive you, will make you go to heaven, or just like a ritual thing? You ask for forgiveness, and we don't go to heaven still. Because man inherently has will, and because has of what? will, has what? Will. What you will? know, will. No, you don't. W I. No, Islam does not believe in will. You mean a free will? Yes, yes. No. We're we're allowed okay. to have. No, you are not allowed. No, you are not allowed. You know, as long as we are talking about Adam, Adam when he commits sin, is that the sin Allah he forced him to do, or it was a choice of Adam? Oh boy. Are you there? Hello? <coughs> Hello? Yeah. I was saying to you, was Adam a person who commits sin by his free will or Allah forced him to commit sin? It was free will. Where do you get this from? Do you have a proof? No, I don't. So, inform, okay, well, uh, well I have I have different proof. Here we go. This is your prophet, and this is Sahih. You're a prophet saying, and this is Sahih al Bukhari saying that the prophet said uh, that Adam and Musa they argued with each other. Musa says to Adam, Adam, oh Adam, you are our father who disappointed us and turned us out of paradise. Then Adam said to him, oh Musa. Allah favored you with his words with his talk and talked to you directly and he wrote the Torah for you With his own hand and guys here remember we were talking about the that he said the Torah the Torah was inspiration only correct Do you remember? The that the stupid did that he was saying just a few minutes ago that the Torah is not a book It was only words inspiration, but look what Muhammad said he wrote for him the Torah with his own hands. Muhammad is getting did that busted again. And then uh, uh, Adam, he said to Musa, do you blame me for action which Allah had written in my faith 40 years before my creation? What do you say about that? Adam, uh, Adam saying to Musa, you cannot blame me. This is what Allah wrote for me. Okay, you said it's Sahih, so it's authentic. Yeah. And it
like to um, I would like to research this for myself. No so problem. Please tell me. This is Sahih um, al-Bukhari, okay. hadith number, Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 6614. And I'm showing it in the screen, actually. If you are looking at the screen with me in YouTube, you can six, see it. 6694. No, 6614. Okay. Six, six, Sorry, 6614. Six, yeah, okay. and I can give it to you from different hadith, not, not only from this. And this is also Sahih. We can give it to, to you from uh, uh, Sunan Ibn Dawood. And this is Sahih. Everybody can see in the screen. Sunan Ibn Dawood, hadith number 4701, and it says clearly there, it says Sahih. And you will see here, it says, Do you blame me for doing a deed which Allah had decreed that I should do 40 years before my creation? So you cannot say to me that you as a Muslims have a free will. And here we go back to zero. You said to me, Islam makes sense. How it makes sense that Adam was kicked out from heaven if Allah is the one who wrote the sin of Adam for Adam and Adam is forced to do sin and then Allah asked him to ask for forgiveness and then after he forgave him he kicked him out which means this is the whole thing is madness Adam is a poor guy he's a victim Allah he writes for him you should do sin as you see with me in the screen it says it clearly as a, de a decree that I should do I should do 40 years before he created me so Allah he wrote to Adam you should do this 40 years before your creation okay and then Adam he commit that as Allah he ordered him to do because this is his destiny and then after Adam he did that Allah he asked him to ask for forgiveness so Adam he prayed to Allah says I forgive me please Allah so Allah forgive him and then still he kick him out what is the make sense for you here brother I'm going to have to research uh, this topic furthermore mm -hmm. uh, I went back to your screen on YouTube mm -hmm. And uh, I, I don't see anything right now. Guys, don't you see the screen? Refresh the page, uh, please. Refresh the page. Maybe you refresh the page, you will see it. <coughs> and not, okay, so... And not so, only that, and not only that, okay, my, so, my, my, my friend, my, not only that, your prophet, he said that Adam, he won the argument. To make it more horrible, not only your prophet he is making a statement that this is a debate happening between them your prophet he say clearly that adam he won the debate in the sahih of al-bukhari it says the prophet added repeating the statement three times what he repeated so adam confuted musa's adam confuted musa's adam confuted musa's three times which means adam was right and musa was wrong where does that make sense here you make me make do sin, and then you punish me for the sin you made me do. Is that is that fair? Is that justice? So there are some things that, as a human, we do not have the ability to understand. All right. Now suddenly, suddenly, now, suddenly, we as a human, we are donkeys. We don't understand. My friend, what would I understand? It's a debate between two guys, and obviously, your prophet taking a side of Adam, and he understand, and I understand. Now you are you are the one who don't understand. He said to him that Allah He wrote for me in my destiny forty years before my creation, and your prophet agree with him. Suddenly, now you don't understand. No, I said that. <clears throat> As humans, there are some things that we were made to not fully understand. Now, brother, like I said before, I am not a learned man of the Quran, mm. as uh, you might. And I might not have the resources mm. to understand like you My have. My friend, you don't need to have resources. I just gave you what your prophet said. What do you say about that? Here we go. This is the resources in front of us. I provide you with resources and he said that Adam he won the debate and Adam you cannot blame him for doing sin because this is what Allah wrote for him so what kind of religion believe that Adam he was a victim of Allah Allah he made him do sin and then Allah he punished him for doing sin and then Allah asked him to ask for forgiveness so he might forgive him and then so Adam where, he asked for where's forgiveness. the proof that where's the proof that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forced Adam into sin. It's in the front of you. What? This is your prophet. Are you saying your your prophet is a liar? No, go back onto your screen and show me the proof. Here we go. It's in the screen, my friend. Don't you see the screen?
people in the chat do you see the screen or not you said it's uh sahi bukhari yeah six six one four Sahih so al-Bukhari, yes, 6614, and the, I will show you the reference in the screen. Here we go. And, and what um, what website are you on, brother? This is sunnah.com. This is your Islamic website. Here we go. Sunnah.com. Okay, perfect. Hmm. So now what we will do? What kind of God this God is? And not only in Sahih al-Bukhari, this is a very well-known hadith. It repeated in Sahih Bukhari actually more than once time, one time, three time, or four time, and same same in Sunan Ibn Dawood, which is a Sahih too, and same in Sunan Ibn Majah, which is Sahih too, and same as in Sahih Muslim, which is Sahih too. So what we will do now? Okay, so let's look at the uh, the next page. What next page? So after. Hadith number 611, let's look at 612, because this is taken out of context. We don't know exactly where this falls into. My friend, what next page? What out of context? What are you talking about? Each hadith is separated as a story by itself. It's not a story the Prophet was talking like a machine and stop. And here the story is ended. The debate is ended. There's, the, there's two guys. We give the microphone for the first one, his name is Musa. We give the microphone to the second one, his name is Adam. Musa says to Adam, because of you, we are out of heaven. Adam says to Musa, you blame me for something Allah wrote for me in my destiny 40 years before he created me. Adam, he won the debate. Adam, he won the debate. Adam won the debate, your prophet said. So what out of context? I honestly don't know. This is uh, this is all new to me, brother. So no I, problem, no problem. Let us let me I ask you. Let us let us say talk. let us see that you are you are a person who follow uh, uh, what makes sense, correct? It makes sense for you that in the heaven of Allah, Allah will give you boys who they are going to serve you. Does that make sense to you? If that's what, if that's what's uh, best for me, then yeah. No, but what what is the sense here? Because in the heaven of Allah, your prophet said, if you wish, if you wish something is going to be in the front of you in a second, and you will never get dirty, you will never do laundry, you will never take a shower, you will never piss, you will never have garbage. So what the boys would do? What exactly the boys would do? Imagine I have a house. If I wish food is going to be in my table in front of me, nobody will bring it. If I wish anything is going to be in front of me and there's no garbage left. Yeah, and my clothes, is, my clothes will never get said. dirty. My clothes will never get dirty. My clothes will never will be, no, never be ruined. They will never have wrinkles. And I will never sweat. I will never take a shower. I will never piss and nothing. There's no dirt. So what the boys will do? Yes, brother. But what if this is a metaphor for somebody that desired boys, not the literal sense of that the boys will serve you, but to have offspring. No, my friend, are... in the heaven, in the heaven of Allah, there's nobody is going to have uh, children. However, your prophet he said, if you desire to have boys in the heaven, you are going to be pregnant and you will deliver it in less than twenty minutes. Yeah, that's um, who knows, right? We're not in heaven. No, I know, I know, because your prophet said, my friend, don't tell me who knows. You see, when your prophet he said, he just said, said that. Read with me. This is Sunnah Ibn Majah. He said, when the believer wants a child in paradise, he will be conceived and born and growing up and short while according to his desire. In different hadith, it says that the believer, when he desire a child in paradise, he shall be carried in the pregnancy born and complete with his egging in an hour of his desire so which means you desire to have a child you will get a bread net and then you will deliver the child you not your wife you will you will be bread net you will deliver the child 
and your child will have teeth and long hair in less than an hour and sa in Arabic at that time is equal to 15 minutes so you will be pregnant you deliver the child and this is not the promise about the, the children who will go around you the boys the young boys who will be serving you so don't mix things up and here does, I'm not does that I'm make, brother I'm not but let's, my friend, let's does, does that make sense to you that you will deliver talking. a child does that make let's sense stop, to you that you will deliver a child in the heaven you will be pregnant and deliver a child does that make sense brother we're not in heaven right doesn't matter so, your prophet saying what the heaven is he said in the heaven you will have you will be pregnant and you will deliver a child does that make sense to you are we in heaven right now Can I'm not talking about it? now I'm talking to, he said to you what will happen to you what's wrong with you my friend he just said yes but the does heaven, heaven make sense in this world my friend you will have you will be but pregnant. does heaven make sense in this world the, 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 no nothing makes sense here because okay, I, then how can because we because in, in the heaven not in the heaven you will be a male or a female my friend Okay, and in heaven you don't have to work or get dirty. There's another question. Hungry. There's another question. In the heaven of Allah, when you go, do you stay male or Allah will change your gender? I don't know. Do you? Well, yeah, I know because He promised you. He promised the men that they will have females to have sex with them. So obviously you will stay as a male. So how you will stay as a male and then you will get a bread net and you will deliver a child? Where the child will come from? From the anus? I don't know. Do you? Maybe you tell me you, I'm brother, asking you you're the Muslim not me <laughs> because brother but you are more learned than me you are more knowledgeable my friend me, uh, so you, you should educate I, I, me. I can I, uh, you, oh, obviously there, there's where 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 a, where a baby can come from I mean this is stupid there's no way it can come out because you cannot you cannot do poop yes, but the you cannot, sense that you you're cannot right you cannot poop is, the, is, is you cannot, relevant to here on earth Yes. So you are saying to me, to okay? Are you so? This, this why I'm asking develops. you. This why I'm asking but you. Are you? Heaven, are you knows? saying, because my friend? Heaven is a different realm. Is this why I'm asking you. Reality. The laws of heaven. Do what not reality? Work There's nothing reality the there. There's nothing reality. You, when you say to me, you will deliver a child, then then he have to make a vagina for you. That's mean you are not a male. You are a female. Yes, but childbirth and child labor and just the conception is a very worldly thing now in heaven there are no connections to this world is that not correct there's no connection to this world what what, what do you mean that everything in islamic heaven is is have a connection for this world you have a penis you yes have but sex, you said oh you, will have you a, said where is it going to come out of my the friend infinite? my friend yeah but everything how do you in the know heaven that god cannot just conjure hmm. something before your eye okay but he said to you you will be bread net he did use he did use you the, the word bread net he, he did and you you desire and you will deliver and then the the boy will have a, a, a hair and will have uh, teeth so now it's time for delivery delivery will be from where from your mouth your mouth nose additional so in the quote you said he shall be carried and then in quotations in pregnancy now is in pregnancy in the literal yes narration because this is literal baby isn't it baby is that no, a, but is that the, a metaphorical baby or this is a real baby right now it says he shall be killed. Yes, in Arabic it says they see they see this is a translation in Arabic it says Hamluhu, which means being breathnet. <laughs> Are you there? Are you there? Okay, I'm okay. Yes, yes, I'm here, but okay, brother. So so you okay in the verse so let us go For, forget chosen. about this forget about this well, give me no, one because thing i want to i want to i want to i want to speak more about this because it's now become apparent to me we are now trying to use worldly uh attributes in heaven which uh -huh. does not work like well, that why okay? why aren't you in the heaven are you going to stay a man physically or you will be a man spiritually there is your penis will be a spiritual penis in heaven or will be a real penis As in in the uh, reproductive mm -hmm. sense, or in the anything, anything. What what pleasure. what will change on you? Nothing will change in the heaven. The only thing will happen. You are going to be more sexual. Your prophet, he said, you will have seventy years orgasm, and your penis will be endless. So what? Yes, what these is, are all, these are all metaphorical. This things, is not brother. metaphorical. Are, what do you mean? Okay, give me the metaphorical of endless penis. It is as is it is uh, it is to say that your desires my friend no 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 in this penis is, is not in the, he can he can say endless desire because in this penis is not endless desire 
when you when I say you have an endless penis, what is the metaphor for? Give me give me a reason. Okay, you're saying that the little pregnancy and the carrying of the child and in the act of you know um reproduction or sex or whatever you know these are all things that are relevant to here on this earth in this world but when we speak about heaven this is something that is not relevant to the laws and to the nature of this world is what, that not correct my friend what is the nature of the world have to do i mean what the difference between the nature of this world and nature of heaven because heaven is not of this world okay the heaven no the heaven of your god is the same as this world nothing changed. okay you will, okay, okay, okay let me let me ask you let me ask you are, okay, are okay, you going, you are you going so to eat how can, how do, you can do you have food there do you have food there do you have food there yes or no do you have food in I, the heaven I of Allah? I don't know. I don't know. What, what do you mean you do, don't know? Do is, we? Isn't it? Is, yeah. Is, isn't it the Quran described for you that you will have an open buffet, and this buffet have only bird meat, right? Only bird meat. So in the heaven you have, and what you will have, you will have a, a certain kind of food, and uh, you will eat it. And you have a fruit, and only he described for you a couch and fruits and the grape and the wine and milk. So what is different? All those things we have in here in Las Vegas. Yes, but in heaven, do you do you die in heaven? Well, I I, I believe you will you will die in heaven more than in earth. Do you? So are you? So so what I'm trying to understand right now. Is why you continue to use law, like you know, like uh, I want to say, like worldly attributes to something that is that is not even relevant to my friend. It's not me. It's not me who is saying that. It's your prophet. He says, "Yes, but you in are, the you, earth, you are taking, in the, in the but, earth, okay, in the earth says, we have orgasm." Said, your prophet, it, it he said, said it's "Orgasm, scary, right?" Carried and then in the in the quotations it says in pregnancy. Now is that in the narration? This is something that I believe <coughs> is you know a human nature to make sense of things that we do not understand. Okay, let, right? me, let me ask. Let me ask, Mister Mister. Sure. You don't understand, Mister. You don't understand. What kind of women you will have in heaven? Are they real women or plastic or silicone? Um, I don't know. What do you mean? If, you don't know? if 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 somebody desires to have, I I don't know. Hmm. If it's real, if if you desire real women, then of course you'll have real women. Okay. What if you desire plastic women? You will have re re plastic women too. Sex toys, let us say. Oh, sex toys. Then hmm. you I don't know. If that's if that's what you desire. Then sure. But hmm. why would you need to go to such a low form uh, in an inanimate object for your pleasure hmm. when you're in heaven? Anything that you desire hmm. is yours. But okay. So this whole conversation and topic that we're on about heaven, you keep bringing back things that are relevant here and then trying to assert them in heaven okay brother first let's come to a common ground that what happens in heaven is not bound by human things okay. and by i want human you, i want you to read this verse for me this hadith for me sure because you are saying if we speak about sex toys it's a low human form so why your prophet the promise knew that saying that in the mark in the heaven there's a market of six toys and those six toys they come into reality when you sleep with them they are images of men and women and then you jump inside the image and you have sex with the man or the women and the customers are men so you are a man who go inside that store of playboy magazine they have images of men and women then you like an image that I say of Michael Jackson. Okay, then so this decide... is once again, I believe, a metaphorical thing. Metaphorical. If you desired a woman with blue hair and 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 gold eyes with 
uh, gold skin. My friend, and my friend, don't, and don't, if you don't, want that, don't go, though, you don't go, don't go. It. Hold on, hold on. It says images of men and women. What metaphorical about it? Images in the heaven, in the paradise, there's a market. What is the market metaphorical for? Go ahead, try your best. There's a market. Market, as in what we understand as when we go into the store, there are shelves and aisles <laughs> lined with goods and merchandise. Right. So, in that sense, for us as humans to understand hmm. what God is conveying, is your in his God message, Allah speaking to, to you? Uh, Allah speaking to you, and you are a human, right? So, and He's using the word market. If it's not market, He will not say market. He don't have to say market. He can say something else. Yeah, but this is something that humans can understand. No and, problem. Thank you very recognize. much. So this is a human can understand. So Allah is choosing the correct word. He chose market because this is what it is, market. And what is inside the market? There's no buying nor selling except, which means there's buying and selling. So in this market, it's a real market because now we are talking about buying and selling. Selling what? And buying what? Images. It says it's images. in in in. The in the, in the in the in the verse that you have on your screen right now mm. it says uh, uh indeed in paradise there is a market in which there is no buying nor selling except of images of men and women so whenever a man desires an image he enters it okay so from this i deduced that the market is similar to when we go into a store, right? We can understand that there are literal hundreds of choices, if not thousands of choices, mm -hmm. options everywhere, mm -hmm. right? Uh -huh. So when we desire something, we can easily go into this metaphorical market, choose what we like, and enter it. Like, have you ever played uh, like Super Mario, where you enter this picture on the wall, and now you're in this other world? So I think that is a metaphorical thing used so we can better understand. My friend, you are a man and you will desire a man. Explain that to me, the metaphorical of it. You are a man and you will desire an image of a man. What does that mean? Yes, but does it say anywhere that if there's going to be, um, uh, that they will have sex? Yeah, this is about sex. Because this is about sex, description of paradise in the heaven. What you you would desire the image of the man to do what with it exactly? Exactly what you would do? You tell me. I don't know. You tell me. You're the this is about sex. The whole thing is about sex. The whole where thing is about say, sex. Where does it? Where does it? Because you desire it. Desire is a shtaha in Arabic. In Arabic, my friend, you see the translation ah. says desire. In Arabic, it says shtaha. Shtaha is a sexual desire. So if you shtaha, shtaha what? Shtaha a man. So if I if I do if I have a desire for a fruit, I obviously I want to eat it. If I have a desire for a woman, obviously I want to have sex with it. So when we say that, that, is, that, that is that is that true for everyone though? What if a man? Desires my friend, you tell me. You tell me. You desire. A you desire a man. With. What what conversation? What are you talking about? Allah will send you to heaven to have a conversation with a man. <laughs> if you desire, you are if funny, you my friend. You, friend. you are funny. Okay, okay, my friend. You are very funny. Now let, let so until now we did not find one thing makes sense in Islam. You you call me uh, uh, fifteen minutes ago or twenty minutes ago and you said to me Islam makes sense, but until now I could not one yes, find one me, thing because, makes sense. Because let because me ask I'm you. Okay, it, listen, listen. I'm comparing it to Christianity. No. Let's go back to my first point where you need Jesus, Jesus for forgiveness. Hmm. I said it right there. So if we need Jesus for forgiveness, then how did God allow Adam to ask for forgiveness and then? Be granted the forgiveness. You see, now, the you see, you forgot, you forgot that Jesus. We, okay, hold on. You forgot that for us, Jesus. Hold on. You off. forgot that when you ask God for forgiveness, is the same as asking Jesus for forgiveness for us. Jesus is God. Maybe you forgot that. Where does Jesus, it say? Where does it say Jesus is God? Well, where the, does it say e Jesus even in the Quran, I can prove it to you. What do you say if I show it to so you from it the Quran? Says, or does or does Jesus Jesus say to ask my Father? Okay, why would you want? To worship the guy that's going to ask his father for permission. Why not just where, ask where, the where it says where it says that Jesus he will ask his father for forgiveness. What do you mean? What do you mean is that? What do you mean he asking for forgiveness or or, or for permission? What where it says that? Uh, did, brother, did, I uh, did Jesus forgive sin in the Bible? I don't know. Did he? Yes. <laughs> sure. Okay. So, brother, this is, like this I said is why. This is why. This is why uh, 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 the, the Jews they wanted to kill him because the, this person is speaking as if he's God. 
you know if you go to Luke chapter 7 verse number 80 uh, 48 48 I think it says then Jesus says to her your sin are to be forgiven and that can be uh, you know mentioned many other chapter in the, in, in the Bible in Matthew chapter 9 verse uh, uh, let me remember chapter 9 verse number 5 it's uh, you know when when uh, when he said that your sin is forgiven and the Jews they were looking at him and they said this guy is, is talking about your sin is forgiven so Jesus says to them which one which one is easier to say to him your sin is forgiven or carry your bed and walk get up and walk so the Jews that they could not take it that he is saying to the person your sin is forgiven and Jesus he wanted to show them that not only I have authority to forgive sin for I am God and earth here we go which one is easier to say to him your sin is forgiven or say to the man who cannot walk okay carry your bed and walk the guy is in this bed he cannot walk he carry his bed and walk okay so you're saying that Jesus peace be upon him is God right absolutely now how can Jesus peace be upon him if he is God then how could he have died if okay so Okay, let, reject, let me answer you. Let me answer you. So you are saying that if Jesus, okay, that if you Jesus are saying, if you, okay, you are saying if Jesus is God, he should not die, correct? That is correct. Okay, that's mean Jesus is God in Islam because in Islam, uh, Jesus until now did not die. Jesus had the holy ascension. He was. Uh, no, no, no! Don't change your topic. Great. You are the one who said to me, "If Jesus do not die, we will believe in him that he is God." No, that is not that. that well, you are the one who said to me that you, say, you No, you are the one who said to me, uh, We as a Muslim will reject Jesus to, to die. And then you said to me, How God can die? Then I said to you, Well, if this is the case, then in Islam, Jesus must be God because Jesus did not die until now, since 2000 years ago. Same time, Jesus, when you say to Jesus, me, who, No, no, hold on. When you say to me, When you say to me, Hold on, hold on. When you say to me, God died, who said to you that? Who said to you that God died? The Christians don't they no, say we that don't, Jesus no, died we don't on say the cross? That. No, we don't say that. God is always alive. Never die. Yeah, but, of course. Same as, same as us Muslims. No, your mean? Muslim is dead already. He never been alive. Our God is always alive. Your God never alive. And I'll prove it to you. When we say that Jesus was a crucified, they killed the flesh of Jesus. But the, but the existence of Christ is long before the flesh. This is why Jesus said, before Abraham I am. So before Abraham I am, he was exist, even though there's no flesh of Jesus ex exist. Yes. So that means his existence have nothing to do with the existence of the flesh. So they killed the flesh, but the existence of Christ is still have nothing to do with it. So they killed the flesh of the man, but they cannot kill God. Nobody can kill God. Jesus, he showed them that even if you kill me, even if you take me to the grave as a flesh, I come back to you for I am God and nobody can overcome God. Now your God, okay. your God never been alive. Prove to me that your God is alive. Can you prove it? We can't. We uh, this, this is something. This is something I believe is called, you know, the leap of faith. Okay, you can't be a believer without fully having faith. Okay, in the fact let me that ask God you. God is here. Let me ask you. Your living God can He say stupid things or always He say smart stuff? Okay, brother. So, is your is I your am, God is a smart God or a stupid God? Of course, he is the all-knowing. Okay, the all-knowing. How much he do not know that the women she don't have a sperm, and he think women have a sperm coming from their ribs. Where where are you getting this from? This is a chapter eighty-six, verse number six and seven. You can read the whole chapter if you want. Okay, brother. So I am I, I am very intrigued. Unfortunately, I'm not right now. I would love to have more conversations with you because as I am speaking with you, it is uh, helping me learn and I'm becoming educated. I am. I have not finished the Quran, not even a, a tenth of it, let alone the Bible. So speaking with you, it has uh, educated me a lot. There are some things that I would like to talk more upon and there are things that I would like to learn more from. So we will save our conversations for another night. I want to thank you for this talk. But before I leave, I just want to know where in the Bible or in any scriptures does it does Jesus, peace be upon him, say, I am God, worship me. I can show you tons of verses, but you are saying you want to leave.
Sadly, yes, some I, have of these... to, I have to go, brother. I okay, am, no problem. In front of, you see, I, I, I don't know. I, like, you have time to listen about Jesus where he said, I am God. I can show you tons of places. Jesus said, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, which means not everyone, but there's many who say to me, God, God. So Jesus said many places. Jesus said to the Jews, what do you say of a Christ? They said he's son of David. And then he said to them, if he is a son of David, then how David called him my Lord Jehovah. So yes, my friend, they lie to you and they say to you, Jesus, nowhere in the Bible says he is God. Muslims are copy paste, but nobody, they do not know their own book. They do not know our book. And then they want to school us about their book and our book. That's wrong. And as you see, you know nothing about your Quran. And yet you repeat the same questions. Muslim, they ask us where Jesus says, I'm God worship me. Why? Because nobody want to see it's in front of us. The whole Bible is saying that Jesus says, I'm God worship me. <laughs> the whole Bible, you know, and when, and when Jesus now, I just quote for you the verse in, in Matthew as an example. In Matthew chapter 9, verse number 5, when Jesus said to the Jews, and verse number 5 and 6, uh, uh, that's, uh, 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 you know, I forgive the sin of this person. And the Jews, they were wondering how he can forgive his sin. Now, if I ask you who can forgive sin, can you forgive sin? No. Can Muhammad forgive sin? No. Can I forgive sin? No. Who is the one who forgives sin? God. Jesus forgives sin, and not only that, he has power over, over nature. He said to the man, carry your bed and walk. So don't be the same as the Jews and don't be the same as the Muslims who they are copy paste and they have no idea what they are talking about Jesus was crucified for he claimed to be God not for he claimed to be a prophet Because he did everything a prophet can do even more. He did amazing miracles So why he will be killed doesn't make sense They wanted to crucify him for a reason because he committed a crime. What is the crime? Okay, so brother you said it was uh it was uh it was John verse number five. What John number five? No, Matthew number chapter nine, verse number uh, uh, four and five and six. We can read them. In in the book of John. In book of Matthew. Okay, in book of Matthew. <coughs> okay, book of Matthew. <coughs> uh, repeat that one more time. About the sin, yeah. Right? Try talking about the sin. Oh uh, no, where Jesus said that I am God. Uh, Matthew chapter number one. There is many verses Jesus speaking about I am God. All of them. Yes, but specifically you see, okay, Matthew. Okay, you, you 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 want me you want me to show you verses Jesus saying I am God, like just saying I am God, right? It cannot it cannot be Jesus saying anything except saying I am God, correct? So if anything I, okay, similar. So if I say to you now I am God, just by saying that that would be enough for you to accept me to be God, correct? Yeah, sure. Go, but let's go back to. Uh, no, no, no. I'm asking you if I say now I am God <clears throat> Is that would be enough for you to believe that I am God? Of course not. Okay, so when Jesus if Jesus he said I am God That will convince you that he's God or still of course not I'm sorry say that again if Jesus said to you I am God is that to come is that going to convince you That he is God No Okay, so why you Muslims you try always to say show me where Jesus said I am God If that will not change anything for you anyway, is that just to play a game to avoid the questions or to avoid the uh, a Conversation which is embarrassing No, I can ask the same thing for you Christians if Jesus did not say that then how can you say that Jesus is God? But I just said to you if I show you is that going to say to me say is that going to make a difference for you? No, but I can say the same thing for you Christians. What do you mean? I mean that if you believe that Jesus, peace be upon him, mm. was God mm. in flesh on earth, uh -huh. then why do you believe this if there is no evidence? I can say the same thing for you. Well, I have evidence because the, the the Bible is confirming that Jesus he can do things nobody do. You now, got... which Bible are we talking about? The Bible that has been changed or the original Bible? Okay, hold on, a... hold on. You see, you are changing topics, and now we can we can go to the Bible with change. If we go if we go in the Bible and we say that the Bible is a change, that's mean the Quran is a stupid book, because the Quran confirmed all the miracles what Jesus did, including resurrecting people from death. Including... Of course, because so Jesus the, so why you are saying prophet. to me why you are saying to me which Bible? So now we have confirmed. We, we have confirmed brother, hold, on, brother, hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on we have we have well. both of us we have we have no 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 hold on, on. You see, I, let, 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 let us go back with what you said I said to you 
why I will believe that Jesus is God because if he say he's God and he did what God can do that confirmed that he's God and you said to me, based on what the Bible, which could change, I said to you, the Quran yes, confirmed. Muhammad did miracles please, please. As well. Muhammad did never did a miracle. God? Muhammad never did a miracle. Don't go. So if we go now in the Bible and I show you, Jesus saying, "I am God." In the same time, Jesus saying, "Clear and doing miracles of God." Is that will confirm to you that He is God or not? Be honest, brother. Many prophets did miracles. Did. My that friend, my God. friend, your prophet, he did zero miracles, and none of them did miracles except limited to what he can do. As an example, none of them can forgive sin. That is a miracle, too. None of them can create from the mother bird because that's a creation. Nobody can give eyes to a blind man that because that is a creation. Nobody can do what Jesus did. You have a you have a chapter in the Quran it's called the chapter of the ta of the table. Which is Jesus? He feed thousands of people from few fish, which means he can multiply fishes. He create fish. So we have a is that lot. Jesus of, or God? This is Jesus, my friend. This is Jesus. This is not your God. God can do nothing. Your God, He's stealing the miracle of Jesus, placing them in the Quran to say, "I can do that too." But your God could not do that. Your God said to Muhammad three times, "Read." Muhammad cannot read the cell. Jesus said to the man, "Walk." The man walk, but he cannot walk. But he made him walk. Your God is squeezed Muhammad three times, ordering him to read. Did he make him read? Are you there? I'm, I'm here. I'm listening. Okay. If we go in the Bible, if we go to chapter in Matthew chapter 7, verse number 21, it says, It is not everyone says to me, My Lord, my Lord, who entered the kingdom of the heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father. People, they will say to whom, my Lord? They will say that to Jesus. There we go. He lost connection. Do you hear me, my friend? Brother, okay. brother, I want to thank you for your time, but mm. unfortunately, I have to go. We will continue this another night. No Just problem. Off, I hope you will leave Islam before the, before the end of the coming week. Call me back again, and you will leave Islam. You will see. Definitely. We will talk more about this. Definitely. I agree with you. Thank you very coffee. much. Take care. Take care. <laughs> Definitely. Muhammad, he had miracles. Like what? Having sex with a child, she is seven years old. Muhammad had miracles since when? Even the Quran says we refrain from sending miracles. Copy paste nation. Where Muhammad had miracles? I can now say all the miracle Jesus did given by my permission. Here we go. I stole the miracle of Jesus. You have a you have a you have a shushu God. Your God is a shish kebab. What God? What is your God? Prove to me that your God is alive. Prove to me for a second that your God he can do something. Here we go. The cockroach is attacking the Kaaba, and your God he is playing with his boogers in his nose. Nobody can kill God. This is what they say to you, but don't you see that God, nobody can kill him true? And this is why Jesus is alive. This is true. Nobody can kill God. You cannot win with God. You will lose. So they kill the flesh of Jesus, but they cannot kill the God. God always is a living God. This is why it's called resurrection, my friend. They killed the flesh. But does that mean that there's no God when Jesus was as a flesh was killed as a as a man? That's not true. Even we as a human, when we, we die, we believe that our spirit is alive. We die by 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 body, but our soul is living soul. So if this is happening for us and we believe in us as a human that we have such a feature. What about God? Our God, my friend, is a spirit, not like your God who is a physical being. So our God, when we speak about him, his existence has nothing to do with the second of the existence of the flesh. This is why the, the Bible says from the beginning it was the word and the word was with God and the word is the God. So the existence of the flesh have nothing to do with the existence of the word. The word took humbly 
the visible image of God as a man which means God is invisible and God appeared to us as a visible image of man which is presenting an invisible God which we cannot see for he is a glorious so he humbled himself and he come to us as a man but does not mean that like you know somebody might say to you well okay Jesus was born from Mary is that mean the Trinity before that day wasn't exist that's a lie the Trinity have nothing to do with the birth of Jesus at that day this is why Jesus says before Abraham I am I am the beginning I am the end so his existence in the flesh have nothing to do with his existence as a Christ And yet the Muslim they say to you where Jesus says I'm God why because some Abdul they told them brother told me brother I tell you it is told me from the Bible one place in the Bible it said that Jesus said I'm God with me if you read the whole Bible you will not find one verse in the Bible said I am God with me and I tell you to tell me that And now the Christians they start quoting for Zach and Nike tons of verses. Jesus says, I'm God, worship me. Is it amazing? Any Abdul? If you mention to me a name was exist let us say a thousand years ago two thousand years ago five thousand years ago imagine i say to you before abraham i am or before adam i am then you will say i'm crazy there's one of two solutions either he's saying that this is really true and by the way when jesus said before abraham i am i am is how god he's saying it to, to moses you see, the Muslims are naive. They don't understand that each time Jesus says, I am, he is saying that he is God because I am is what he, God, said when he spoke to Moses. Moses asked God, what I will tell my people, what's your name? What I will say to my people? This is exactly what God he gave himself as a name. I am. So each time Jesus says I am, he is saying I am God. What is the name Jesus or God he gave himself to Moses when he spoke to him? I am. He didn't say David, he didn't say uh, Allah, he didn't say anything. So because of their ignorance, they do not know that Jesus is saying, I am God. When Jesus says, I am the truth, if we ask the Muslims, who is the truth? They will say Allah. Allah, obviously, Allah trying to steal the name of Jesus. When Jesus said, I am the truth, he just said, I'm God. I am. Is how God in the Bible presents himself in the Old Testament and New Testament and the truth is God for no truth but God and this is actually one of the names of Allah according to Islam <clears throat> any Abdul
my colleague says that Jesus has already here in India as the prophesied in Islam. Where is prophesied in Islam that Jesus will go to India? Ask your uh, ask your colleague. Does it say that Jesus will eat cur will eat curry too? Is he Ahmadiyya? The Ahmadiyya are a bunch of foolish people. They follow a, a fake false man who said that he claimed that he was married for three years. Imagine, and then he became Jesus. He was married three years, and then he became Jesus. Hmm. True story. And look how the Christian, they got this guy, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam busted. Anyone knows what they did to him? Anyone knows what they did? Because Ahmad Mirza, he claimed that he is the Messiah. The Christians, the guy, he one day he opened the door of his house and he found like 40, 60 people in wheelchair and they cannot walk. And they said to him, if you're Christ, do what Christ do. He said, no, sorry, I cannot do that. <laughs> I am a Christ, but I cannot do what Christ do. Do you see how much he is of a Christ? Anyone? The Messiah, according to Muslims, they have their own funny interpretation because those are words that they stole from us. They don't know what they mean. You know, Messiah is not an Arabic word. So the Muslim, they try to find a solution. What is the Messiah? What is the Messiah? So if you go and read, try to find the interpretation for the word, the Muslim, they say, because he have a flat feet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what a silly, stupid, like cult. The Messiah is a name for somebody have a flat feet. So why you don't call yourself? Why, if somebody want to call himself the Messiah, you kill him? You will not find one person in Islamic countries there to call himself the Messiah because if you do so, they will kill him. You know that? You find Isa. You find Muhammad. You found Ibrahim. You find Musa's, but you will not find somebody call himself Allah or kill himself, calling himself Al Messiah. So, if Al Messiah means somebody have a flat feet, why you want to kill him? <laughs> Dr. Groin, okay, what is what is what is the name in his uh, what is name in Skype? <clears throat> Let him text me first. Let him say hello for me first, so he can call me. Islam is just a fake cult, and they try to come with all kind of explanation, which is the most funny, stupid. They do not know what Musa means. They do not know what Abraham means. They do not know what Jesus means. They do not know what Injil means. They do not know what Torah means. They do not know what uh, even even the word Quran is wrong. In Arabic, there is nothing. It's called Quran. This is a word coming from the Aramaic. Everything in this in, uh, you don't even know why Muhammad. His name is Muhammad. How in the world you call a man? He's a prophet of God, Muhammad, because Muhammad is a name of God. Muhammad means the praised one. So if this guy is the praised one, who is praised to Allah? Uh, Mr. Green, Mr. Green, if you want to call me, just say to me hi and I will call you back. Send me hi, my friend. There is somebody he tried to call many time, but it might be somebody want to scream and shout. Let us see this guy. <coughs> oh. 
Okay. Say hi to me and uh, call me. Oh, I will call you. I never find one Muslim, found Muslim. He can explain to us any verse in the Quran. Here we go. I can flip the pages of the Quran for you from now until tomorrow. And I change any Muslim to tell me what this verse is about. Any Muslim? Who is a beautiful Muslim or handsome Muslim I would like to call us? Anyone? Okay, look like we are out of them. Any Abdul? No, Abdul. All right. Well, sharp your teeth, Abdul. The judgment day is coming soon, and soon you will notice if your penis will grow endless or is going to be burned, barbecued. Hmm? You know, one of the funny things about Muhammad, when the people they challenge him for a miracle, do you know what he said to them? He said to them, Allah told me to wait and wait with you. Uh, he wait with us. <laughs> Unbelievable. Huh? What the heck? People are asking you for a miracle so they can believe in you. And you say to them, and this is the case for all, all the prophets in Islam, supposedly. Wait, and we will wait for you. Hmm? Wait, and we will wait for you. Chapter 10, verse 20. They say, why has God don't send a miracle? Just one. I mean, come on, just one. Allah said to him, say to them, wait, I am waiting with you. <laughs> We are waiting still, my friend. We are waiting until now. What kind of God? He said to them, wait, and I'm waiting with you. All what the people want, a miracle. Why your God don't show us a miracle? Stop talking, start doing. Show us a miracle. If you are a prophet, true prophet, let your God support you. And this is the answer? Wait, I will wait with you. Okay, we are waiting. My friend, can you do, can you do, uh, the, uh, can you discuss about Rahaf? Who is this girl, woman Rahaf? And how you know she left Islam? I mean, the world is start talking about the world is a world of hypocrisy, by the way. There's there is a Christians are captures everywhere in the world just because this girl she speak in the in the airport and now some bunch of atheists they start supporting her suddenly she became a hero and you guys a Christian you start saying she she, she left Islam where she left Islam and why the whole world is talking about her Christians are getting killed and tortured and raped all over the uh, Pakistan and Middle East and 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 Africa and all over. And now this girl, she became the most important girl in the world. 
just because Associated Press they they make a report about her and suddenly everybody have nothing to do in life except this this girl Rahaf. The word of madness. That's it. All the Christians are getting killed. We forget about them. We are busy with Rahaf. If she left Islam or not. The whole idea, this is a propaganda. Because the girl, she is from Saudi Arabia, Qatar, she's sponsoring anything will make Saudi Arabia look bad. So the second they heard that a Saudi girl, she ran away from her family, she asked for asylum, Qatar right away starts spending money all over newspapers, attack Saudi Arabia and use the same as what, that, what happened with Khashoggi. So now any Saudi, he will as ask for asylum anywhere in the world, the whole media will sponsor because money money is talking my friend do you think they care for her because just because she's a human being since when they care for a human being Jamal Khashoggi the one they defend day and night he himself is a terrorist and he was a member of Al-Qaeda and he fought with Osama bin Laden and he was a member of the Saudi intelligence suddenly he became a human being he is a citizen he is a nice guy, he is an author, he is a writer, and he works in uh, uh, Washington Post. And the people are naive, that they are like goats, they follow the news. Here we go, Rahab became superstar. If this girl really, she is suffering from torture and problems, she will not be able to go to Thailand. Because families who they are really strict in their daughter, they will not allow their daughter to go to Thailand, my friend. How she was able to go there. But anyway, and you know, for me, I don't take a side, not because she is a Muslim. And now I say, okay, we say she left Islam. Which I never heard her saying she left Islam. Did she say that? Did you hear her saying she left Islam? Anybody saw a video of her saying she left Islam? So what? If you have a daughter somewhere, don't you come to get her? Doesn't matter. She left from Kuwait. That's mean her family are not really strict. They allowed her to go to Kuwait. She said that she left Islam. Did she say she left Islam? I saw her video. I never saw her saying such a word. Can somebody send me a video of her saying she left Islam? No. Sammy Tunisi is saying no. He did not see that. Anyway, <clears throat> okay, show me the video where it says she left Islam, my friend. I did not see that. She converted back to Hinduism. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. But anyway, this is how the media, they drive the crowd. I mean, look at you. Now you are so upset for, what about this poor woman? You know, she is in jail for 15, 20 years in Pakistan. And then they release her and they want to kill her. I mean, 20 years in jail and nobody spoke about her and nobody cared. What about you save her? She was in jail in Pakistan. What about Christians who they are executed in Iran every day for, 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 for they left Islam and they became a Christians? You know, when they want, they make you a superstar and they make you, they are the only important case in the world. Jamal Khashoggi was killed. How many people get killed and tortured in everywhere in the Middle East? And not only that, the hypocrisy is the following. How many the CIA killed in the last 10 years, as an example? So this is Saudi Arabia CIA, let us say. 
and they killed somebody he considered to be danger and he's betraying them why we don't do the same about the CIA every day the CIA they assassinate somebody somewhere anyone who have involved with terrorism they kill him even if he's an American citizen like al Wakili as an example so if the American they get their hand at al Wakili they will you know they killed him when they, they made him shish kebab actually they did not cut him pieces only they make, make him barbecue they burn him alive <clears throat> All countries in the world they kill and they assassinate. All Islamic countries is true, they have no value for a human being. But don't think that Western countries they are really too much a value of a human being when it's come to uh, somebody he is a risk for the country. They kill him too. Khashoggi is preparing for a queue against the royal family in Saudi Arabia and he is a Muslim Brotherhood Khashoggi does defend always the Muslim Brotherhood that they are the only solution for the Middle East So Khashoggi simply is a terrorist The Muslim Brotherhood is the one who killed Sadat Why they killed Sadat because he signed a peace agreement with Egypt so how the group who sign who, who, who say and, and their and their flag by the way that the Muslim Brotherhood why do the home prepare for them this is the logo of them prepare for them what your arms and your horses this is the verse the muslim brotherhood they choose as their logo make ready for them your arms forces and horses to install terror in the heart of the believers believers so tragically and the muslim brotherhood which trump is defending them because trump is a closer friend to the prince of qatar obama is a closer friend to the prince of qatar look at the hypocrisy of the american they want to fight al-qaeda in afghanistan but they sponsor al-qaeda in qatar and the american they have no idea what's happening Trump said that we finish war in Syria because we destroyed ISIS. What about Al-Qaeda? There's more than 80,000 fighters of Al-Qaeda in the north of Syria right now. And Trump, he says, we finished the war in Syria. Since when? Hypocrisy. Suddenly, Al-Qaeda is our friends, and now we don't want to kill them no more. All of them are the same thing. The whole idea is why we want to destroy Al Qaeda in Syria. Give me a reason. Let Al Qaeda fight with Iran because now we have Iran in Syria. So let them busy fight each other. This is the whole point. Wisdom, wisdom of let the, let let the, uh, let let the enemy fight each other. You know the wisdom of their own way of thinking. But are we done in Syria? We are not. No, Trump is a, is better than the rest. You know, we have to admit he is way better than them. Actually, he's not a puppet. No, it's the opposite. Trump is a person nobody can predict what he will do because he is not a puppet. Puppet is the one you can control what they will do for the coming few months because you give them agenda and they will go by the agenda. This guy, he have his own agenda. Even his own ministers, they cannot agree with him. This is why they keep resigning because he is not to be driven by, by a leech. He have his own way and he have his own decision and he don't care about the rest let us say he have a mentality of dictator so he is not a puppet but what i am saying that a trump at the end of the day he say things which american like to hear but doesn't mean this is the truth we are not done in syria and why you allow the turkish to come and take over the kurdish the kurdish they fought with you they fought isis and they trusted you and now you leave them alone so you sacrifice them just to make the Turkish happy you know so there is many many stupid things in the in the in the world people do but at the end of the day uh, if the media want Trump to look like a, a KKK they will make him KK and they did already but Trump he helped the black people as never before 
he signed laws for the sake and the, for the benefit of the black people in America. Nobody did before, but yet it doesn't matter what he do. Trump, he came. America was was uh, the economy was collapsing. This this guy, since he came, the the economy is going crazy. But still, is not enough. You know that's it because they want to make him the devil. So the media don't follow the media, my friend. Be honest. When when Trump he do something wrong, I say he do something wrong. I don't decide by what the media say. As an example, I say Trump he made a big mistake by hiring his family to work in the government, because that make it like a, a, a family business. This guy he think America is a corporation. He's a businessman. So his son will take this, his daughter will take that, and his brother, his son-in-law will take that branch. This is not a corporation. This is a country. That is a big mistake to do. So when we do mistake, we say it, but not because the media they say so. But is he better than the rest? I, I, I assure you that the shoes of a Trump is better than all the president before him. Way better. So when I speak against him, doesn't mean he is bad. Imagine you are in a charge of a country like America. I mean, God himself could not make people happy. People are still complaining. Jesus, he came to us and still people complaining. So how would Trump, he will make a nation happy, especially half of the nation is liberal. Right? Yes, Trump is better than all of them. You have George Bush, the idiot. George Bush, he gave Iraq to the Shia. He gave it to Iran. As simple as that. What do you want more? Obama, he gives Syria to the Shia. He gave it to Iran. What do you want more? And now you will blame Trump. Anyway. Madness. Can I call it, please? Bridges TV. Let us see this guy with him on. <laughs> Hey, Prince. Yes, my friend. How are you? Hi, how are you doing? Uh, thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. Are you a Muslim, my friend? No, sir. I can be called X, but no, I never accepted Islam. I born in Middle East. All right. And uh, one of the luckiest who never took Islam, uh, never believed in it, and surprisingly never said Shahada. But I left Middle East way early and uh, reside in the U.S. That's good. What do you want to say uh, to us, our friend? Thank you. First, uh, I just uh, actually learned about you recently, and uh, I was so amazed about what you're doing, and you're doing a great job. Amazing job to expose. Uh, first, uh, by the way, I'm, uh, I'm atheist, All but right. I will stand with every single one, with every single religion, and any belief except Islam, as long as you accept to, lead, to live with others peacefully and respect other wishes. Islam, the only cult who reject and subjugate and despise everyone else. Um, I'm calling really to say thank you for what you're doing and would love to be with you. I'm not debating or anything. Would love to be here with you if there's any Muslim want to talk about Islam and the self-proclaimed prophet uh, Qatham bin Amina, mm -hmm. so with so-called Muhammad, which is you mentioned a few minutes ago, amazingly you described it as uh, the braised, and I have you know uh, if you want to have a couple of I mean if we can go take and go with the question and answer, but I have two theories about Muhammad name. If you guys want to hear it, go ahead. Where is it? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, first, Muhammad, as you said, called the bra the the praise, which is the like the, the thankful. Um, I think you speak Arabic, right? Yes. Yes, sir. 
كثير الحمد the one who prays a lot right it's not a name it's a it's a, it's a, a cipher it's someone to, you can describe someone as the one who prays a lot which is muhammad and to tell our brothers and sister the sisters victims of islam and also that you need to mention muslims are the very first victims of islam uh, muhammad never been named muhammad he was qatim and from unknown father after four years of so-called pregnancy i thought i don't know if people know about this and uh, muslims believe in that till today actually because uh, a lot of people don't know amina uh, the mother of muhammad was uh, you know they call it the red district the red flags at that time in arabia do business like sex business uh, of course i'm not against it she's free to do whatever she wants but the the fruit of that was muhammad himself Qatim. so uh, the name came there are two stories uh, stories i heard it from a uh, very uh, ancient christian family uh, am i can you still still hear me sir i do go ahead yes yeah, Muhammad, for the name came, this is the first theory, uh, from, if you also understand Arabic, if you can help me with this too, from Muhammad, the one who baptized, Muhammad. So, in order for Qatham, the rejected person and who used to live in Mecca, which is, I have another theory about Mecca, Muhammad was, uh, or Qatham, in order for him to marry the rich merchant Khadija, he must be Christian. Because in at that time, and even today, you cannot marry uh, a Christian lady without going to church. I mean, it's a tradition. But at that time, it's more tradition. So, Qatham, he got to baptize. He got to Yata'amad, Muhammad. So, you got my point here so far because you understand. speak Arabic. I think yeah. you understand yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. He, he is saying that in order to marry from a Christian woman, you have to you have to become a Christian, as simple as that. Yes, but to be Christian, the word is Muhammad. Yeah, to get to baptism. be baptized. This is exact word Muhammad, which is similar to Muhammad. Hmm. So then, after he married her, that guy who called Qatham, and now AKA Muhammad Rasulullah. I don't know which Allah. He become the one who they Muhammad, the one who baptized, and then the name took over with time and become Muhammad. Okay, that's one theory. The other theory, of course, there are two theories that Muhammad never existed or Muhammad existed, but they uh, put a holy crap on him later on. Uh, sorry for the word. So the other one is. Uh, Muhammad, which is Qatham bin Amina, that took the name after, and with the one we know by now, came from the fifth uh, Umayyad Caliphate. Nine to, uh, no, I'm sorry, the, uh, between, uh, I forgot the exact years, I read that, I mean, um, I think 92 years after Muhammad, the, the fifth uh, Caliph, uh, Help me with the with the name, please. Um, uh, you're, you're talking about about who exactly? The fifth cal, the Omeya caliph, Abdul Malik bin Marwan. Abdul Malik bin Marwan. You mean? Abdul Malik bin Marwan. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, I, I read so much about this yeah. cult. Yeah, and Muhammad was not for sure existed, but someone was there. A mafia and thug guy who literally you know they used to loot invade and uh, take the caravans and loot them that's what Muhammad did in his exiles Sa'alik you know the, the reject the, the murderers no, the, reject, the, the uh, tribes who expelled Muhammad got them and told them like this is what can we can do you be with me let's go invade 
kill. Your reward is you kill the man, take woman, slave, and whatever it's yours. And it was very successful. Of course, I can go details, more details about this, until become uh, and 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 like it's a business, successful business for thugs, and by sword, Muhammad got them, and that was uh, Islam. Islam started. And the one, first one who canonized it, literally, Abdul Malik bin Marwan. By the way, there is no single evidence, single evidence, not Muhammad existed. I mean, historically, theologically, uh, even uh, with any logic now, with any science, no way there's Muhammad, Muhammad was existed. Neither there, the fourth uh, right guy caliphate, the four, you know, Abu Bakr, his friend and his father-in-law with the baby Aisha, and also we have a story about Aisha. The second one, Omar ibn al-Hattab, not Khattab, and I think you understand the word, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, all, 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 of this, all, all, all of this, you see, all of this is a is a theory, but for me, yes. um, and, I, and I advise you actually, is not to waste your time in focusing in the, the person of Muhammad and what mm -hmm. is the root of the name. Let us focus on the stupidity of this book because <clears throat> at, oh, the yeah, day, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. at the end of the day the Muslims not many they will be uh, they will agree with you about what you said about Muhammad but they cannot deny what is in front of us on the screen you know what I mean so yeah. if, if we if we destroy what they have in their hand which they agree upon then there's nothing nothing uh, yeah, is, yeah. Not, is Thank impossible you. I, uh, 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 please excuse me to cut you off um, because this is my first call I just want to start with this because we just mentioned Muhammad mm. and his, his, his caliphate and you <coughs> mentioned about the uh, authenticity of their books uh, I want to ask here if you agree with me or not uh, uh, I think you, I heard it from you a couple of days ago and I knew this I mean I said this back in the days uh, Muhammad said Allah the God of Islam uh, commanded earth not to eat their yes. prophets yes all right so this is one and the second one is in yemen a few years ago a couple of, i mean i think a decade or so ago they found the oldest islamic text the oldest islamic text and books in uh, the big uh, they call it the big sana'a yeah so uh, sana uh, Quran, sana yeah you know all right, Quran of Sanaa, thank you. And after exactly they found it and they read it, they hid it immediately. Everything got hid and no one ever seen it. So my question here to Muslims, and we know how Muslim behaves when, when no, they the way, find the any Quran truth. Quran of Sanaa is not hidden, it is exist because the, the Yeah, yeah, no, no, it is existed, yeah. but it's been hidden from scientists uh, they cannot, they cannot more because because the scientists they already take copies, and they because what happened they brought uh, German, yes, a, a German scientist to study. Oh yeah, it. yeah, and, I know that. Thank and, you. And, and, yes, and already he got everything there, so they cannot hide it now. I mean. So uh, my question about this, you we just both agree they hide it, right? They hid it. I know. That so my is, question yeah. to Muslims: Why did a government, Muslim government, hide? Uh, strong or weak evidence about Islam. And the next question, why is the Saudi Arabia buried or covered every single uh, evidence that Muhammad was existed? Never, they don't allow any, any foreign scientists uh, in, in inspection or anything to get into that land. And we said, uh, you know, about uh, Allah ordered the planet not to eat their prophets as so if i'm if i'm a muslim and devoted muslim and believe in allah i want to see my prophet if he's still the same as uh, you know the same body and physique not just you said something very funny i think a couple of days ago about because he ate and and died but he got killed he didn't die and then then t a couple you know they left him then no one cares about him when he died Literally, they were fighting about who going to take over that thugs military. So, why they don't ask about seeing their prophet who started? Literally, his body was farting for three days after he decayed. 
that's my uh, point here. If you have anything or anyone who want to, yeah, because uh, because he told them that the the body of the prophets, uh, the the earth will not consume it, and they believe him. And maybe they were hoping at the same time because he said that the earth will not consume anyway. So what the point of burying him? Yeah, no, because they saw the fact his his he smells his body start decaying, and they thought he would be like Jesus. You know, yeah. literally that is the 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 first first, first they believed him. First, the, the, mm -hmm. the first he, he, he they believed him when he said that because he said to them in that first too he claimed to be God. Obviously, he said, "Pray on me." For your prayer will be uh, submitted to me. Then they said, "Yes, to him, I, I, I'm aware of this." Yeah. So they said to him, "But how our prayer will be submitted to you when you will be dead?" He exactly. said, "Don't worry, my body. Uh, you know, the, uh, Allah, He forbid the earth from consuming the body of prophets, which means my body always will be preserved." And this is why, when he died, did not bury him for three days, uh, uh, because they believed that his body will not be consumed, so they kept him out. But after three days, they notice how his belly, uh, uh, you know, his his, his yeah, belly yeah, became yes. became so big and so huge, and his farts start coming out, and they decide then that what he said obviously is a lie. Great, great, yeah. Um, literally, I, I when I called, I don't want to debate you. You you're doing a great job. I just want to support you. I'm there, and also by the way, can can we you honor us? You honor us to be a guest on my channel. Uh, my channel uh, focused, I mean, uh, the first Middle East, North Africa, Europe, uh, YouTube cut me off earlier. I used to do shows here in the US too. So it would be an honor to have you in Arabic and English too, to talk about these issues. Um, um, as I said, I'm an atheist. Uh, my channel is open to everybody. You know, like uh, reforming Islam. So you have a Islam, you have a YouTube channel. Islam. YouTube channel. I'm it's, sorry. You have YouTube. You are you're talking about YouTube uh, channel. You have. Yes, sir. Okay. A, if you see my what? logo, that's exactly yeah. mine. You can you can TV. you can uh, post anything you want in the text, and people will see your name, and they can click at your name, and they will see your page. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I would love to see you on my. I will be happy. So, uh, I will be happy. So you can you can do broadcast anyway. I mean, when you call me, it's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'd love thing. to chat with you on Skype. I mean, in private, if that's possible. We let, where, where you reside, if you don't mind. I am in the state, in USA. Oh, thank you. I'm in DC, by the way. I'm yeah. close to the Khalifa Trump. Right. And um, <laughs> um, I, I, literally, uh, I, I just want to. I have two groups in the US on Facebook. Facebook groups. The goal is to raise the awareness about uh, danger and the threat of Islam. And especially lately, and during the Obama administration, uh, the rise of Islam and the mass investigation of Islam now. So this is thing. This thing we need to talk about. And also, if anyone hear me, I was trying to reach to the apostate prophet, my friend, my buddy, and I would love to that if we can do things together to start to educate. America, uh, Canada, the West, especially Canada, I think, is fallen fast. In the U.S., we have two Muslim candidates. Uh, their lies already driven there. I mean, shows and uh, and I, I know. I mean, I definitely know. Living in three Muslim countries, living not visiting. I lived in three Muslim countries. Muslim devotion, no matter what. If you Muslim, you devote to. I mean, your devotion is. To Quran and Muhammad teachings, and I feel terrible. I'm frustrated that two representatives and females that's the problem females who Islam despise and they are inferior uh, to anything. Uh, I mean, inferior to men, human, inferior to any human rights. To be uh, 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 part of the Congress in the US, and they did. Uh, they uh, they are activists against uh, America and they work or promote Islam. This is very frustrating. Yeah, no, it's, 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 this is politics. This is politics, and the liberals is the one who made them in the Congress. It's not the it's not the fault of the Muslims. It's Muslims, they are like everybody. If they can get a good job, why not? So uh, we uh, have, we yeah, have yeah, the stupid, we have the liberals who you know they wanna. Uh, they want to buy the Muslim to make them vote for us, and the Muslim they vote always for liberals because you, you mentioned something earlier, brother. Yeah. 
also the uh, infiltration of, of uh, 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 Saudi Arabia and Qatar and with their money they can buy everything they, they you know there's a seat in every that in major universities the the seat of King Fahad the seat of whatever and also I want everyone to be aware there's you know Harvard University in the United States the most prestigious university in the world it's Sharia compliance pool for Muslims only never heard of that is disturbing the thing is I don't care about if they want to pray if they want to fast this is not my deal my deal is when they do something in public and they want to impose it in anyone else when they tell my kid not to eat jello because from pork and they forbid it from the entire county and state that's a problem that's the that's the message they send in here and the uh unfortunately the, the islamic lobby in in the u.s getting so strong and need to stop the rise of uh, uh, feminism that uh, just like linda sarsu said a liberation of women started in the seventh century by by a prophet called muhammad mm -hmm. liberation of women anyone look take a look on middle east four wives endless concubine and sex slave that's a liberation there are so many things i i can talk about but i i i'm just this is what's coming to my mind now thank you for taking my call You're if you have anything friend. you want to say or you want me stay or you want me leave let me know well uh, we, we will see if we can take more calls but we appreciate your call and thank you for sharing your thought with us and you know feel free to call me when you like Thank you, appreciate thank you, it. Friend. Thank you, take care. Thank you all. You know, I don't want to blame, I don't want to blame the Muslims if they can make a school do Sharia compliance. It's, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and why the student allow that to happen? I mean, why the student don't go against the school? I mean, you know, I, if I'm a Muslim and if I can make all of America do that, I will not hesitate. Good for them. I don't really care. What we care for that it doesn't matter how much money they spend trying to promote Islam, Islam is dead. Go and make a special place for Muslims to pray in every school, in every university. But let us see how many Muslims will stay Muslims after they learn the truth about Islam. That's what they are worried for, about, and it's not you know the, the rest is really is not is not important. Here we go. All the Middle East is a Muslim country supposedly, but there's no Muslims in the in, in the Islamic countries. You go to Morocco, there is no Muslims in Morocco. Where is the Muslims there? Prostitution, drugs, kidnapping, rape. I mean, for sure there's good people, there's bad people, but I mean. And what is what is Sharia law? Why why in Islamic countries nobody want to do Sharia law if they, if they are Muslims? Nobody wants Sharia law in Tunisia, in Morocco, in Algeria, in Libya, in Egypt, and even in the the the, the in, uh, with the with the, the organization of of uh, Yasser Arafat, <clears throat> in Syria, in Iraq, and uh, I mean where when we say Islam, Islam is not a washroom. And a place to pray. That's not Islam. I don't care if they have a washroom everywhere, because this is not Islam. Islam is killing somebody for saying something against Islam. Islam is stoning people to death. Cutting hands, cutting arms, cutting feet, crucifixion. The rest is just garbage. That's not Islam. Any country does not practice Sharia law is not Islamic. Even according to Muslims. So when they speak about Islam is spreading, Islam is not spreading anywhere. Islam is shrinking. Because if you cannot practice Islam in Islamic countries, so what you can practice Islam? By building a bathroom in the airport? 
good luck with that do you understand guys my my logic do you understand what I'm saying Islam is dead what is Islam in the Middle East Saudi Arabia as an example in the month of Ramadan it's empty the whole country either in Egypt or in Thailand or in the Philippines or in Vietnam sex tourist so if people don't want Ramadan and they celebrate Ramadan drinking whiskey abroad the country that's mean there's no Islam Islam is not a law and a country and people say we are Muslims Islam is people they like the religion and they believe in it if there's nobody believe that's mean all of them they are hypocrite by names they live in the in the condition where they cannot dare to say well I don't want to drink whiskey I don't care for fasting this is why if you go in in in, in you know in the month of Ramadan to, to Europe or anywhere you will find it flooded by Muslims coming from the rich countries like Saudi Arabia or Qatar or Emirates or Bahrain so what they do they cannot eat and they cannot drink in the front of each other because they are a nation of hypocrites so what they do they go abroad you know what I mean Islam is dead I am actually even not even worry about this cult I am worried about liberals and Christians who promote Islam I'm not worried for Muslims because we have liberals and atheists who promote Islam as never before more than Muslim themselves this is why you see this woman Linda Sassour she is with them but she's supposed to be against them because Islam is against abortion supposedly Islam is against uh, gays and lesbian so how she can stand with Islam when the Islam oppress all those women and oppress the women itself even if she is not a gay or les lesbian but they use them so the the if you want to be worried worry from the liberals and the foolish Christians who promote Islam without knowing as an example you will go to a church you will see a priest saying Islam Islam uh, Muhammad is Abrahamic now all the Christians in this church they believe this idiot and they believe that Muhammad was Abrahamic the second you say Abrahamic it's mean he's Abrahamic as simple as that <laughs> I mean that's it is not a pagan religion and they refuse to say that Muhammad is a bad person so who is more dangerous a Muslim who says Islam is good or a priest who say Islam is good the priest a Muslim is very normal for him to say Islam is the best. He's a Muslim, right? So for us, we have a duty to share awareness between all everybody, atheist and non-atheist, Muslims and Christians. The and the most important is not to speak with the with a tone of hate. We don't hate the Muslims. We don't hate anyone. Islam is dangerous. Muslims are people like us. They want to live. They want to eat they want to drink they want to uh, have fun they want to they want to be like everybody but Islam is the problem so we don't want to make what we do against Muslims we are against the cult of Islam which is bring oppression and it's a mafia um, gang system either you accept Muhammad or we kill you either you accept Islam or we you are dead or you have to pay jizya if you are a gay we will throw you from the top of the building if you are a lesbian we will jail you inside your house so Islam as a system is a scary and disgusting and if you are a person who don't want such a thing to be part of your life then you have to stand against it and this is what we need to do to to, to tell everybody including the atheist and those who call themselves liberals that Islam is totally the opposite of what they claim to be that uh, you know like the second you speak about Islam the liberals they accuse you you are teaching hate but if you talk against Christianity you are not teaching hate the second you say Islam is bad you say to you are racist but Islam is not a race we are not talking about white and black and you know this is not about race same as a Christianity is not a race there's Asian Muslim, there's black Muslims, there's white Muslims. 
So what race? So they try always, and this is the problem, the liberals, they try always to defend Islam by their stupidity, not by using, using any kind of logic. Like if the liberals can prove us wrong, then I will say they are right. We show them from the Quran, the Quran says beat women. Then they say to you, Islam is a good religion. How the Quran says beat women, beat your wife, and then you say Islam is a good religion. They are teaching women that if you grow hair under your arm, that will make you equal to the man. So we are talking about people, they have, I don't know, I mean, <laughs> weird. What a growing hair, if you grow hair under your arm, will make you equal to the man? Okay, grow hair, grow, grow a mustache too. Why only the hair under the arm? So they have their own understanding of life, and liberals are very hard to discuss with them because they are stubborn, and they have the mentality of terrorist. You see, when you say to a Christian, you cannot use the word of God, they are being a terrorist, the same as a Muslim terrorist from ISIS. This is terrorism. This is what the Soviet Union did. Soviet Union is the best example of liberals. They are socialist and they force their own agenda on you. And they tell you what you can say, what you cannot say, what you can eat, what you cannot eat. It's exactly the same as Islam. This is why we find that liberalism and Islam, they are like in love because both of them, they believe in, in, in terrifying others who don't believe with them. If you have a cross, they get offended. Who? The Muslims and liberals. But they going, but the liberals don't get offended by a Muslim praying in the street. If you are a Christian wearing a cross, the liberals get offended. But the Muslim having a room for washing and for praying in the middle of the school, no problem. And the reason they do that, they believe that Muslims are minority. And they are not a threat for them. So what they do, they use, uh, uh, you know, let us say they they use each other like it's like a, a friend would benefit. So the liberals they need the Muslims, the Muslims need the liberals. So okay, both of us we can conquer the Christians and we can destroy Christianity. So both of them they share one thing: Christianity is bad. We need to demolish it. And because we share one enemy, so we are friends. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? So, uh, uh, but uh, sooner or later, the liberals, they will see that uh, Islam is not only their enemy, is the biggest enemy ever. When the Muslims became a percentage in USA or percentage in Europe, then the liberals, they will start crying, asking Christians for help. You know what I mean? Now, they don't see them as a threat, but wait until the Muslim, they say, we want Sharia law. We don't want you to eat uh, uh, pork. We don't. We forbid pork. We forbid wine. We forbid etc. Then the liberals they will start crying. Says, "Oh, we wish the old days will come." For me, all of this will not make any difference. And actually, I don't mind if European countries controlled by Sharia law, because I believe that European need to be punished for leaving God, and the best way to punish them to have Islam on them let them be punished for closing churches for fighting Christianity for taking the side of the wrong for defending Islam somebody have to pay for all those things done through centuries teaching children that there is no God teaching children that Darwin is right and Darwin by the way is nothing but a racist scam Darwin himself, he put a black man inside a cage just to prove that the monkey is a black man. How dare you to accept Darwin to be a scientist? So, for centuries, they are fighting Christianity. And if something wrong happened to them, that is a price to pay. For sure, some of you will say, well, we are European and we are Christians. My friend, discrimination of Christians will make us better Christians. We will not lose. Still, we are winners. But sometimes there is no solution except, you know, you, like it's like it's saying, if I have a hot fever, 
uh, then I will recover from my sickness. I don't know if you heard that before. Like they make somebody cover with many blanket, many blanket until he's burning, and that supposedly will release him from the sickness. So sometimes burning the steel is the best way. Burning the the iron is the best way to make steel. If that will make fix your off, fix it. But still, I am not worried from Muslims, and I am not really, I'm not really concerned about Islam will be successful. The only concern is the stupidity of the liberals and the stupidity of uh, some Christians who defend Islam. Those are more dangerous. And let me make it simple. Let us say if the whole world became Muslims and nobody became a Christian but me, I'm still victorious. Because, you know, for me as a Christian, it's about life after, not only winning here and there. I won myself and I lost the world. This is what the Bible said. Uh, so we as a Christians, we should fight within ourselves the ignorance and the ignorant and the deceivers in our churches who teach Islam is a good religion. If you cannot do that, you are wasting your time. You send your son or your daughter to the church to learn about Jesus and they come back learning about Muhammad. Go and see in YouTube how many churches inviting Muslims to teach their children how to pray to Allah. Go. You will not believe it. So, and how many churches they say Allah is the same God as the Christians? Right? Those are more dangerous. However, I believe Islam is collapsing and Islam already actually collapsed. The money of Saudi Arabia will not make Islam establish, will make, uh, let us say, a political Islam establish. That is different from Islam. There is, you see, uh, uh, the idea of investing a lot of money in the West is just to make, there's a competition between Muslim countries about who can control the media uh, for the benefit of the royal family who controlled the country of Qatar or Saudi Arabia or Emirat. But nothing really working for the benefit of Islam. And I will give you a lot of examples. The Muslims, they give a lot of scholarship for people to learn about Islam and to convert to Islam and learn Arabic, as an example. Many of them, they go and learn Arabic and they convert to Islam and then they fight Islam. And the best example we can quote is don't convert to Islam. You can go to his channel in YouTube. This guy, he spent 16 years of his life as a Muslim. The Muslim, they taught him Arabic. They took him to many conferences and they use him for their propaganda. Over day, overnight, the guy, he switched upside down and he decided to fight Islam. Why? Because now he speaks Arabic very well. And now he learned Islam is nothing but a scam. So always, the Muslim, they try their best. They invest a lot of money trying to make you believe Islam is a, is a, is a growing and Islam is great. But even you, even if you convert, sooner or later you will find Islam is nothing but a scam. And then what will happen is upside down. They invested money on you to make you fight for them. Later they will find that you are fighting against them. So, you know, I'm not really worried about any of those things. And as you see, in the last month, how many Muslims we have left Islam here? It's just, you know, we are just doing video, YouTube. I mean, we don't have a TV station. We are not CNN. Yet we have tons of people left Islam. So what if we have very, you know, large audience? What if all of you copy my videos and share them everywhere? Copy debates and let everybody laugh at Islam. Islam is collapsing. It's just a matter of time. Uh, you know, I predict that the, the Middle East, in 50 years from now, will be Islam free. Maybe it's hard to believe, but I believe it's it's happening already. You see, if you go right now, if you check all the cities where ISIS was controlling, go and see. They are not only out of Islam, they are they are sick of Islam. The best way to make Muslims see what Islam is about is to bring Islam to them. When the Muslim Brotherhood, they won the election in Egypt, I was in a radio show with the brother Osama Dakdok. Osama was so upset, he said the Muslim Brotherhood, they won the election, and now they will discriminate the Christian. 
I said to him, this is the best thing happened. And he said, how? He said, you will just wait a year or two maximum. The Muslim themselves, they will hate Islam. And he said, how is that what happened? I said, because now Islam is a government. You see, Islam can can uh, can can school you, can lecture you about good and bad as long as they are not government. Because they can blame you for being secular for all the wrong. But then after they became government, they can't blame anyone except themselves. That's Islam. They are Islamic you know, party. So after they take over, everybody noticed that Islamic parties is no better than secular. They are worst, a lot worse. So 30 million Egyptian went in the street against Islamic party like Muslim Brotherhood, and they changed the regime over over overnight. When when the Muslims won the election in Algeria, the Algerian themselves they went in revolution against the, the they won the election literally because nobody wanted to vote and the Muslim they were they were very well organized, so they did win the election because the secular they saw to themselves well, they would never win, you know. It's like you know thinking about. Uh, the same as the story of the rabbit and the uh, the turtle. So the rabbit, he was proud of himself. He's fast, and it's a turtle. So they said to himself, the turtle will never win. I will run in the last second. So what happened? The turtle won, and then the Algerian decided to go against the Islamic uh, party, who won the election literally. And then um, more than a million Algerian was killed since the election because of that. So you ask yourself, the Algerian who paid a million a million uh, uh, victim of a war against Islamists, then why the Muslims are rejecting Islam? Why the Muslims are big deal against Islam if Islam is good? The president of Algeria is a Muslim. The ministers, the police, the army are Muslims supposedly. So why the Muslims don't want Sharia law? Because they are Muslims by name. You know what I mean? Same as what happened in Tunisia. Like we have a brother here. His name is Sami. He's from Tunisia. You can ask him. In Tunisia now, they are they're having a law where the women she will inherit equal to the to the man, which is against Islam totally. And they have a law where the women uh, uh, she can marry even non-Muslims, which is against Islam totally. So Tunisia well, went into Islam. Islamic party won the election, and then suddenly Tunisia flipped upside down against Islam. So I don't see Islam in Islamic countries. This is why I'm not worried about Islam in non-Islamic countries. If they cannot have Islam in their countries, how they can have it in our country? Right? <clears throat> this is what I am. What I said uh, is it clear? Right? I don't see Muslims believing in Islam. I see Muslims by name. The majority of Muslims are Muslims by name. I predict that I don't know how long it's going to take that Iran government will collapse. And I assure you that after the collapse of the Iranian Islamic government in Iran, Islam will never enter Iran again. <laughs> Just watch. The best thing happened to Iran is bringing Islamic government. Because now, all those who they are Muslims by name, they will not want to be uh, even to be called Muslims ever. Iranians are waiting for the second that government collapse, and you will see that this country will flip upside down. Islam will be forbidden. So, my friend, Islam is like a big balloon, but from inside it's empty. It's nothing but gas. Islam today is worse than Soviet Union before collapsing. Soviet Union was really powerful. It is real. It's not balloon, but it collapsed overnight. So Islam is a balloon. It's not the Soviet Union and is going to collapse even faster. And if you look around you, you cannot even find two Muslims, two countries, they agree with each other in anything. They are in war, they hate each other, they kill each other. Sunni and Shia, Sunni against Sunni, Sunni against Shia, Shia against Shia, Druze against Sunni, Sunni against Druze, Shia against Druze, I mean, you name it. This is a nation is 
is extremely divided and collapsing they have no safety they have no security they have no fund imagine all the monies of Emirat is in Europe the Bank of Emirat is not in Emirat the Bank of Qatar is not in Qatar the money of Qatar is not in Qatar the money of Saudi Arabia is not in Saudi Arabia it is in Europe or in America why because they themselves don't trust themselves they don't trust their security they have no security if Trump right now says I am not going to protect Saudi Arabia Iran will, will occupy Saudi Arabia in five minutes and the whole Middle East will collapse and Dubai will be a, a ghost town so all the success they have is fake is nothing is not real all the success they have is based in the protection of the West and the West protection is temporarily because as long you are paying them they protect you but what if you don't have money enough to protect you they will leave you alone uh, <clears throat> so anyway uh, I see that Islam is not really is not really uh, is not establishing itself it is the opposite and you notice each time a Muslim he call us not even one of them he knows what Islam is about even those who claim that they have knowledge, even those who speak Arabic. They don't know even if a God, is, their God is a spirit or not. Each time we ask somebody something about something, they say to me, I never heard this before. That because there's no Islam. There's only Muslims. All right. Anyway. Uh, I think we have enough for today. What Mimi, Mimi Hijab? What about him? Mimi is a very nice guy. Mimi, he proved to us Islam is false. Mimi Hijab, he said that for 4,000 years, not even a single rabbi, he broke the command which he instructed to worship one God, which means the Quran is false because the Quran, chapter 9, verse 30 and 31, says that the Jews worship Uzair uh, and they worship their rabbis. Uh, he said that Allah he pray for, not he don't pray to. I mean, what do you want more? Mimi is a very good person. We should donate for him actually <laughs> nobody is better than Mimi Mimi hijab and uh, his nurse Ali Dawa very funny people uh, and uh, the other one is Shamshi Shamshi is even nicer so you know th this is why you, you see the one who defend Islam are the most silly one if those are the one who defend Islam so what about the normal Muslims we just showed you how did that he says that the Torah was not given to uh, to Moses uh, as written book right he said that and we play his voice but is, is it is it uh, isn't it the Quran says that even Muhammad he said that the Torah written by the hand of Allah do you see it <clears throat> read with me carefully when did that who claimed to be a scholar he said that the Torah was not revealed uh, uh, by as a book to Moses it was an inspiration and here's a prophet he say clearly that he is the one who wrote the Torah for you so who is the liar here if the dad do not know what his prophet said so what about the rest of the Muslims potatoes did that is the same person who said that not a single Jew not a single Jew believe in the Trinity but the Quran says that the Jews believe in the Son of God and this is in the Quran and Mimi he was copying did that by the way that's why he made the same stupid mistake. So uh, uh, Muslims are very funny, and uh, we laugh when we hear their, their answer. And uh, for me, I don't see even an answer in the answer, except uh, tons of mistakes, which will help us always to refute Islam. 
the guy today we debated from uh, Nigeria this guy is a big shot in Nigeria he turned to be a potato and the first 10 minutes from the debate he's gone his history we did not even have a debate you do not know anything about his religion but in Nigeria he's a big shot because he is in a poor naive Nigerian who do not know Arabic they do not know Islam they know nothing about Islam and the guy he go on the stage and he sing for them in Nigerian Muhammad. And I, I watched one of his videos I was dying from laughing it's like a comedy show no they take advantage especially in a society which is not educated you know the more uneducated you are the more they take advantage of you and this is why you see the Muslims they approach people who they are European different from people who they are in Africa depending on how much education you have or much how much worth you have or depend who are you when 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 Muslim they speak a black American uh, uh, African American they speak about slavery and what the white man do to them but when they speak to the white man they never mention the slavery because they don't want to make him feel like they are speaking against him so to the black they speak about slavery to the white they don't speak about slavery yet Muhammad himself is a buyer and seller of slaves so when they approach everyone depend who you are they try to deceive you when they come to Christian Prince they knew they are talking to Christian Prince so the game will be different show me it is daif uh, I don't accept it I don't believe in the hadith uh, okay go to this uh, interpretation we go there Oh, okay. This one is not okay. They go to the end repetition, so they jump like monkeys. So it depends. They are talking to who. If you are a person who knows nothing, it's very easy to to play with you. If you are a person who knows a lot, still they are going to do their best to play with you. If you are a black, they speak about slavery, but they will and they will lie to you. They say to you, "Do you know that the first person who call Allahu Akbar for a prayer is a, is a black man? His name is Bilal." The poor Bilal, he you know he 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 was dying for his slavery, his freedom. He was calling for the prayer because he was a slave, not because he was free. Can you tell us even why Muhammad he owned them? You 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 keep saying to the to the Muslim to the African Bilal Bilal Bilal, but who is Bilal? Bilal is the slave of Muhammad. They thank you very much. If Muhammad is against slavery and Bilal was a good man and Bilal will go to heaven, what about you say to Bilal, go home? You know what I mean? As long as Muhammad is a wonderful man and Bilal is an amazing man. Muhammad, he loved Bilal. Don't you think Bilal deserved to go home finally? This guy is an African. He's from Africa. He needs his family. He needs to see his family. Bilal, go home. You are free. That will be wonderful. But you say to me that Muhammad, he is against slavery, but yet he owns slaves and he have sex with the slaves and he raped his slaves. And he don't free his slaves and then you say to me that he is a guy who is you know he defends slavery he's against slavery right there is no ties between saudi arabia and israel there is a there is a, there's a friend with benefit there's no ties you know the, the muslim will never have tied with with the with, with israel but they have it's like having sex with a girlfriend. You don't want to marry her. She don't want to marry you, but they want to have fun. So the Saudi now, they, they, need, they need the Israeli protection. They are weak. They can't trust Trump. He will protect them. They have a big enemy. It's called Iran. And if a war happened, who's going to help them? The Jews. So the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Very simple method. But they are not really friends, and they will, and they will never be friends. Right? They will never love Israel, but they need Israel. Not only uh, Saudi Arabia, even Iran need Israel. Even Iran need Israel. Actually, I believe the destruction of Iran as government is in the hand of Israel. As simple as that.
Uh, what do you think about Muslims according to the Bible? My friend, the Bible is very clear. Anyone who denies the Father and the Son is an Antichrist. Secondly, they will not go to heaven. Number three, the Bible warns us not to do what Muslims do. As an example, not to pray in the corners. That is what hypocrites do. And Islam teach hypocrisy. I remember when I was a kid, I go to a, to a, uh, to a friend, you know, in school. We are kids. So when, when his father want to pray, he opened the windows, he opened the doors, so the, the, the balcony in the other side of the road, people will see him from everywhere. It's cold. And I say to him, why your father opened the windows, man? It's cold. He said, he liked people to see him. <laughs> he want all the neighbor to see his praying. And if it's not if it's not cold outside, he will go and pray in the balcony. So all the neighborhood will see Hajj Ramadan praying in the balcony. Mimi Hijab is praying. Allah Akbar. Once I enter and the father is having a little rock in his hand and he is hitting his forehead with it. I said to myself, What's wrong with this guy? Why is he doing that? I asked the kid, Why each time I come here, your dad is doing that? He said, because he want to make a spot in his head. Why he want to do that? He said, I don't know. And then I said, why? You know, why Why is that? He said, I don't know. He's a kid like me. I mean, we're kids. And later we learned that this is because he want to he wanna go out in the street and people will see this spot in his forehead and people will think that he is a person who pray a lot. Hypocrites. In the month of Ramadan, I go to like you know we are kids, you know we finish the school or etc. I go to this house to a house to this kid Ahmed or Muhammad whatever. And once we ate cookies, we are you know children. We ate cookies and I want to leave. He said no 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 wait wait wait. I said what? He went to the kitchen. He put some water in his lips, and you know he put some salt in his lips, and he's uh, I was talking to him. He cannot talk. He, uh, he don't talk. So I said, what are you doing? You look funny with this. Why you are doing this? And then after he finished, he said, I, this is what all my family do. Before we leave the house, we put salt in our lips because that will make them look dry and that will not make people know that we are not fasting. I said, who taught you this? He said, all of us, my, my dad, my mom, all of us. So they don't fast in Ramadan. They eat all day long inside the house. But when they want to leave, they put salt in their mouth. They put a lot of salt, like they, they, they cover it really like powder, you know, a lot of salt in their lips and they don't move their lips for some time until the salt suck all the, 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 the wet lips will make them really dry. So when you go out, they will think they are fasting and they are people who they are following Allah and they are, you know. This is why I say to you, Islamic society is not really exist. What is exist is fear. Time will come and the, all of this will go in garbage. They don't want to fast. Go go to Dubai. What is where is Islam in Dubai? The prince he donated to build mosque. The prince he built the biggest mosque mosque in Europe. The prince, but in his country there is no Islam. Did you watch the New Year evening in Dubai? Hey, well, you Muslims, what do you have with the New Year evening? Why you are celebrating the New Year evening? You know what I mean? What the New Year even have to do with Dubai or Kuwait or Indonesia or Bangladesh or 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 Turkey? What do you have to do with it? If nothing to do with it, then why you celebrate it? Where is Islam there? Christmas trees, Merry Christmas. Uh, Valentine, go and see Valentine. You know, and by the way, the Muslims, the real Muslims, are doing their best to fight the 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 impact of Christianity in Islamic countries, but they cannot. They are losing ground. Childrens, they don't have happiness in Islam, so they celebrate Christmas. You go to the Middle East, you find many tons of thousands of houses. They have a Christmas tree inside the house, but this is a Muslim house. They don't believe in Christ. 
is born in this time or anything they don't believe in anything of occasion like this but because in their religion they don't there's no happiness happiness in Islam is is based on two things food and sex so if you're a child what you do they give you some change you go and buy some sweet this is what is called the aid there's no happiness You cannot even trust in Islam to have a Santa Claus who is a Muslim because Santa Claus is a Muslim, he will be a child molester like Muhammad. Can you trust a child she is six years old to sit in the lap of a Muslim who is acting as Santa Claus if he believe in Muhammad he was a right prophet? Muhammad he married a six years old. So how we can make someone who believe in Muhammad to be the best man to be a Santa Claus? Uh, Anyway, uh, this is why I say I'm not really worried about Islam um, to grow. I'm worried about ignorance to grow between the Christians. And that's why we are here to fight the ignorance and fight the fake ones who defend Islam, specifically from the Christians. And there's a lot of them. I advise you, if you go to a church, you ask a question to the priest, you go to his church. What do you think about Islam? If he starts saying Islamic, Islam is Abrahamic. Muhammad is a prophet. This guy is nothing but a scam. You leave his church immediately and you warn others about him. A church is a place where people see the truth. The Bible is so clear. Whoever denies the Father and the Son is an Antichrist. That is not Abrahamic. When the Bible says that, when the Bible says that, the one who denied the Father and the Son, that goes not only for the Muslims, goes anyone who deny. Ask yourself, why a priest, he is willing to say the Jews are wrong when they say that the Messiah did not come yet. But he is not willing to say Muhammad is a false prophet. Or to say Muhammad is Abrahamic. What, what is Abrahamic about Muhammad? The black stone, the Kaaba, kissing stones, killing the Christians, killing the Jews. What is Abrahamic about him? His heaven, the vagina and the boys. So if you have a priest who cannot say to you what it should be said, it means mean he is a coward, he is a potato. You know, he is a politically correct. If he is not willing to say to you that Islam is a false religion, then you leave his church immediately. And those are the ones actually make me worry. Is not a Muslim trying to promote his religion because at the end of the day, a Muslim is a Muslim. A Muslim, he cannot deceive my children as easy as a priest. If a priest says Islam is a good religion, and your child going to church, he trusts this man. Your son, he will come back and he will say, Islam is a good religion. When a priest, he invite Muslims to teach Christian children how to pray to Allah, why you would be upset if a Muslim, he tried to teach your children about Allah? If your priest is trying to do that. All right? Abraham's seeds in Hajar. Okay, what Hajar have to do with Muhammad? And this is another stupid things we hear in our churches. I was going to close, but let us answer this person. You go to church, you say to you, they say to you that Muhammad is from Ishmael. I challenge anyone to show me how Muhammad is from Ishmael. How in the world stupidity reached that point in churches they say that Muhammad is from Ishmael. Anyone can tell me? How Muhammad became from Ishmael? Even the Muslims in their books, if you have my book, The Session of Allah, you will see that the Muslims themselves agree that Ishmael, he learned Arabic at the age of 13. So he learned Arabic from the Arab, but he is the father of the Arab. And he did marry, according to Muslims, from the tribe of Jahm, which is the enemy of the tribe of Muhammad. So he married from the tribe of the enemy of Muhammad tribe, but yet Muhammad is from him. 
same time uh if muhammad is a child belong to ishmael how that he is an arab because always the child he follow his father to make it simple if ishmael is a son of abraham and he is an aramaic and his mother is an egyptian that's mean ishmael is ismail is half egyptian half aramaic so how my son is an Arab? Imagine I marry Japanese and I am an Arab. My son is German. That is funny, isn't it? So, you know, people, they are just copy-paste. Moses, he married from a Bedouin woman, a desert woman. Why the Jews and why Christians don't say that the children of Moses are the Arab then? You know what I mean? He married the woman she is not from the children of Israel. She is from the Bedouin, from the desert. But nobody say that the children of Moses are Arab or Bedouin. Uh, So when the Christian in the church they say to you that Muhammad is from Ishmael they are trying to give Muhammad legitimacy to be accepted to be a prophet this is the whole point to say he is from Ishmael because that will make him from Abraham you know what I mean but if you ask your priest can you show me where in the Bible it says that Ishmael is the father of the Arab can you show me that where it says that where you get this from They say to you that the Bible says from the seed of uh, Ishmael will be a great nation. The Arab are a small nation. The Arab actually is the smallest nation in the Middle East. Many of you think that Morocco is an Arab. Morocco is not an Arab, it's an African. Egyptian, not Arab, African. Tunisia, not Arab, African. And they are from ethnic group like Amaziri, etc., Egyptian. Syria are not Arab, they are Syrian. Iraqi are not Arab. They are they, they are they, the original of them. They are Assyrian. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Iran is not Arab. They are Persian. So where is the Arab? If there is an Arab, they are limited in Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Emirates, Bahrain, and maybe Yemen. All of this will not even be forty millions. Where is the Arab? And actually, I believe strongly there is nothing, there is no ethnic group called Arab. Like I call myself Arab, but the fact is we are not an ethnic group. Arab is whoever live in the desert. It's not an ethnic. This is what the word means in the Aramaic language. This is a name given by the Aramaic. Whoever, whoever live in the desert, in the Western desert, they call him Arab. This is why the Bible speaks about Arabia. Arabia is a desert. Wilderness. It is not an ethnic group. By time, those people who live in the desert, who have many languages, by the way, not one language, when Muhammad or Islam conquer other tribes, they force the language of Quraysh on others. And then everybody starts speaking the same language. But even the language of Muhammad itself is not an Arabic. We can't call it really in Arabic. It's kind of a mix of many languages. If you go and look how the prince of Qatar looked like, you will see he looked like Pakistani. Same as the prince of Kuwait. Same as the prince of Bahrain. Same as the king of Saudi Arabia. They look like they are Indian or Pakistani. If you look, you will see that between them there is a small little tiny sea, which is a couple of hours in the ship to go to Pakistan. Their hair, their eyes, their color, everything is Pakistani. Which means they are not really Arab, as an ethnic. They are coming from India. Even the Muslims agree that Adam himself is an Indian. When Allah, he kicked Adam from heaven, he came down in Sri Lanka. Correct? 
Is it that this what they say? So even the Arab themselves, they have the, the 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 legions that their roots is from India, because Adam himself is from India. And then Allah, He placed the Kaaba, He put the black stone in that location, and He ordered the angels to build the Kaaba, and then He ordered Adam to do Hajj, and and Adam He did forty time Hajj, going all the way from Sri Lanka, which is India, all the way to Mecca. And even the black stone is very much similar with the Hindu stone, the stone of Shiva. It's a sexual stone. Present a vagina and a penis. So you will find a lot of similarity between them. Even when the Muslims they wear the clothes of Hajj, the clothes of Hajj. Do you see how they 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 cover one shoulder with a sheet? This is Hindu clothes. This is exactly how the Hindu they they close themselves, and they shave their head. This is exactly how the Hindu do. So there is a lot of similarity of Islam. And obviously, Islam is uh, the, the origin of Islam as a pagan cult is a practice based on other belief, stones, the Hajj, the pilgrimage that going around the Kaaba. Uh, the sexual uh, uh, belief uh, Islam is a collection but obviously the Indian belief have a huge impact on it right anyway I think we have enough for today I thought I'm going to be online for 15 minutes. You believe it? I hate you guys. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> Please download this video. I'm not going to take a bit for long. Soon I'm going to clean to all my videos on my channel. So soon you will see only a few, four, five videos left only. So if you want to download, download. Because soon they will disappear. All right? And the reason I clear them out, because I want to be sure people are downloading the videos and they are not just depending on me. All right, so if you care, take the videos, download them, cut them pieces, do whatever you want with them, be part of the mission, make your own channel, get your own subscribers. Even you can add commercial if you like to make money. Good for you. I mean, I don't, I mean, I'm not against you to do that. You know, why not? If you can make money from it, make money. You know, you will make money and you earn a blessing in the same time because you save somebody's life by learning the truth. So I encourage you to download the videos. You can, I know my videos are long, but you can cut them pieces about topic. Like somebody called me, spoke about something, you cut that topic. Uh, I spoke, I thought about something specifically. You want to, you, you, you think it's important, cut it and post it on YouTube. And there's many actually, I really appreciate them in YouTube right now. They are posting a lot of videos of my videos. And um, like there's a guy, his, his channel is called the uh, Christian Prince Debate. So if you are a person who want to, watch my debate but you don't want to watch the rest maybe my video is long but you want to see a real a debate then he this guy he have tons of debates which he obviously is taking him time to cut it off post it again you know good for him his his channel is growing um maybe he have i don't know how many subscribers he have so you can do the same you can copy you can paste you can do you know let us do something. Let us be useful. Let us not to be people who watch and don't care. People who don't care for God, God don't care for them because simply they don't deserve his care. If you don't want God to be in your life, you don't want God to take some of your time, that's mean you are selfish. And time will come and will go fast. Yesterday I was a kid and you will see how time is going to go very fast. So do something good for your future. Do something good for others. Help others to know the truth. If somebody watch a video, even though you are not the one who's talking there, but you are the one who posts it, you receive the blessing of the Lord because you are the one who helped this person to see and to learn. So yes, you are the one who made him leave Islam, not me. Because it's you who put that video in front of him and you are the one who brought the awareness of the cult. 
so do we, you know we need to do what we can do and not to depend in one person all right so I want to say thank you for being here may the Lord bless you and until we see you soon again Christ is Lord Islam is false thank you very much bye bye